We here at Super Sports are ready to bring you the new season, the 1996 SU Lacrosse team. Where head coach Roy Simmons Jr. starts his 26th season on the SU Hill. The Hall of Famers won six national titles, but a seventh will be a big challenge this season. On offense, Coach Simmons is loaded. Casey Powell is back. The sophomore from Carthage led the team in scoring a year ago with 39 scores. And then there's the team's quarterback. Rob Calvitt, number 15, led the Orange in assists a year ago with 34, like this beauty to JD's Doug Jackson. Coming up, we'll see how the Orange offense can explode against the Georgetown Hoyas here at the Carrier Dome tonight. Super Sports presents NCAA Lacrosse. Tonight, the 10th ranked Georgetown Hoyas take on the number three Syracuse Orangemen. Record so far this year, the Hoyas 1-0, SU is 0-1. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Super Sports coverage of SU Men's Lacrosse. This is Dave Ryan alongside my broadcast partner for the season, Dale Drypolcher. And Dale, very excited about a brand new season of SU Lacrosse. But the Orange would come in, as we saw, 0-1. Head coach Roy Simmons Jr. told us before the game, if there's such thing as a constructive loss, one they can build on against UVA, that was it. Well, you know, you mentioned offense in the open, and, and that's that's probably one of the keys. You didn't mention the defense. we got a brand new goalie in Jason Gebhardt. Three guys who play defense, but not together as close defensemen. So you're going to have a little bit of a problem. I think they had a little bit of a problem against a high-powered team like Virginia. So it is a constructive loss. Let's look for Syracuse to work on the defensive side of the field. The offense should take care of itself. Now, Syracuse started the year number one in the preseason U.S. ILA rankings, but the loss to UVA drops them to number three. Georgetown comes in with a 1-0 record, having beaten Butler. They're ranked number 10, but the Orangemen don't really care about rankings so early in the season. Absolutely not. It's, it's what you do in May and June, and uh, that's the whole you know whole process you have to go through. And uh, I think they both know that, and this is just a, it's a big game. And if Georgetown could pull it off, it would be a big game for Dave York. All right, we have an added bonus to our Super Sports Lacrosse coverage this year. Our very own sideline reporter, she's standing by. Here's Beth Mullins. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, the Dome has been very kind to Syracuse, particularly on opening day. In fact, they have not lost their home opener in the last five years. How tough is it to beat the Orange here on the carpet? Well, over uh, the, uh, their all-time record here is 93 and 7. That's what the Hoyas will be up against tonight. We'll meet the starters and have the opening face-off as we return to the Carrier Dome after this timeout. Welcome back to the Carrier Dome on the campus of Syracuse University. We're set for NCAA lacrosse here on Super Sports. Let's check in with starting lineups. First for the Georgetown Hoyas, Dan Brennan, Jim Fenzel, and Greg McCavera are on attack for the Hoyas. Dan Martin, Dan Shea, Doug Meehan, and Matt Pappas will see some time at the midfield. Martin is the All-American. Wychulis, Rienzo, Plunkett, and Eli Wooten will be in net for the Georgetown Hoyas tonight. And they're led by Dave Urich in his seventh year with the Hoyas, but Central New York lacrosse fans know him very well from his time at Hobart, where he won 10 straight NCAA Division III national championships, a record of 54 and 24 so far for him at G-Town. Eli Wooten is going to be in between the pipes for Georgetown. You see his record so far. And here's the Syracuse starting lineup. First on attack, Morrissey from Skinny Atlas, Doug Jackson from JD, Rob Kavavit is the field leader for this team. Price, Carcaterra, and Powell will start at the midfield, so Casey Powell getting some time at midi tonight. Denver, Fotopoulos, Smiley, and Gebhardt are on defense, and there is the head coach, Hall of Famer Roy Simmons Jr. in his 26th season on the SU Hill, and as we mentioned, Dale, to start of the broadcast tonight, the Hall of Famer has just done an unbelievable job with the Orange over the years. Absolutely. Syracuse up with it. Ball down. Price charging shot. in the first shot. That bounces over Wooten and out of bounds. Syracuse still has it in the offensive end. So the Orange, Dell wasting no time at all to get going. Absolutely not. And uh, you know, one of the things we will talk about in a second is uh, a rule change that's very significant. Right now, uh, Syracuse has the ball behind, and they're getting a substitution already in both teams from the bench area. Carpentera comes out onto the field for the Orange. So Casey Powell seeing some time at midfield. Of course, he played most of the 95 season on attack. That is a difference with the SU offense this year. And here's the Carthage common himself. Casey Powell loses his footing. Had a big game against Virginia with three goals to lead the Orange attack in Saturday's 17-15 loss at UVA. And that opened up the season. Rob Cavett, what a great final four he had and wins over Virginia and Maryland down there. Carcaterra winds that shot, sticked aside by Wooten and out of play. Nice save by Eli Wooten. I mentioned Matt Casson, number one, the guy who has the unenviable job of of taking on Casey Powell, guarding him one-on-one. -on -one. He's only a sophomore out of Rye, New York. Uh, this is a very, very young uh, Georgetown team. And Syracuse, 
although not necessarily all that young, lots of new faces in different positions, so it'll take us a little while to get used to it, but some of the old ones, Kavavet has it again from behind. One of the new faces, sort of, is Matt Doyle, who missed the entire 95 season after blowing out a knee, but he's back this year. He's one of the team's leading scorers in 1994. He is there, number 29, and firing that one off the post. Boy, he rang the pipe on that one. Chance for Doyle early. Jackson hits hard. Let's see what the call contact is. Contact in the near sideline. Stay Syracuse ball on the shot. So Syracuse will get the ball back. As you know, on the shot, whoever's closest to the ball when it goes out of bounds gets possession regardless of uh, who shot it. Syracuse gets the ball back. 13.40 left. Just underway here in the first half. Carpentera will trigger the offense, Dale. Syracuse has had possession so far the entire first period. That's something that Coach Simmons told us before the game today was a big problem against the Cavaliers. Charging in, Doyle couldn't get his shot off, blocked from behind as the Hoyas look to take over for the first time, but they won't due to good hustle from Paul Carcaterra. Unable to run that down, Josh Rule, number 17, for Dave Yorks, Georgetown Hoyas. Me and 36, nice job of getting that ball down. He's going to come out, but uh, number 36 is the guy who caused it all the mini junior out of Brightwaters, New York, for Georgetown, but Syracuse gets ready to start it in. Casey Powell, only a sophomore, tremendous talent from Carthage. We saw his younger brother, Ryan, who's going to play at Syracuse as well, play some basketball over the weekend. This guy's a great athlete, too. Casey stripped from behind, couldn't get the shot off. Nice recovery, though, from Cavett, and he regains. Slow whistle, penalty flag drop. So the Orange have a man up coming. Syracuse still possession. They've had it the whole time. Finally, Cavett loses the ball off his cross. But Syracuse, Dale, will have a man up advantage coming. That's going to be a slash, so a one-minute penalty. Now, one of the new rules that you have to look at that's kind of interesting this year is it used to be if Georgetown for example a man down knocked the ball down ran it down and got it in the, to their other attack area that would release there's the shot right there on the face mask that caused the flag to fly but uh, that would release the penalty in other words if you got the ball in possession in your attack half that would release anybody you had in the penalty box not so this year it's a full time serve so until a goal is scored Georgetown will be down for one minute so it used to be you could get out but uh, not now. Now they will score. get him out. You got that right. <laughs> Rob Kalovich starts the scoring for the Orange in style. He was wide open, Dale Dry Poulter in the slot. And Eli Wooten had no chance. Syracuse up one zip. 12.47 to go in the first. He was wide open. You're going to see just the end of it there. He just did a little bit of a jump shot. And uh, the, uh, the uh, goalie is really at, at the, the, the mercy of a man like that who can get in that shooting lane about four feet from the cage virtually impossible to stop so uh, it's going to be one nothing Syracuse gets a short excuse me a, uh, a man up goal so uh, they it. do a good job there 1247 to go in our first quarter and the orange up Toby Price takes the face off but loses one first time that we've seen Georgetown actually have the ball on the offensive end Iorio was able to win that face off for the Hoyas he is a second line face off man he and Pappas will see equal time on face offs Greg McCavera controls number 12 behind the cage, and Jim Fenzel, number 7, is there also. And then early turnovers. The Hoyas may be a bit jittery in their first road game of the year. Dan Shea, number 13, loses it. That's one of the things that uh, I, I, I talked to Coach Yurk before the game, and he said one of the big things he thought was going to be the intangible, which is how his young guys, uh, mostly freshmen and sophomores, would play in this kind of a situation uh, against a, a team that's traditionally been the best in the country. And he thought they might be a little intimidated, and early they might make those mistakes, and they did there, threw it away. Have to give Christian Fotopoulos credit. He, uh, he helped cause it, but going the other way now. And as... Martin with the interception, Dale. He'll come in the midfield. He's the All-American player to watch. Nice hit, though, as the Orange try to make him pay for it. Ira Vanderpool on defensive midi with a big-time hit on Martin, and now Georgetown will reset the offense. Greg Peters' second-line attack is out there, number nine, in addition to their first-line players. And here's Dan Shea, a 5'9", 170-pound sophomore, looking for the Hoyas' first shot. Bouncer by Gebhardt. Georgetown there to back it up, so G-Town will still have it in the offensive end down. One zip with 11.47 to go in the first. Obviously, if you're Georgetown, this is a new goalie for Syracuse. You want to try to put as much pressure on him. He's going to feel comfortable here at home, but you want to make him feel uncomfortable and get some shots on him. Oh, nice job by Martin. Left-handed shot. shot there. Pipe. That rung off the pipe as well. Second pipe we had in the game. Gebhardt had no idea where the ball was for the moment. Finds it and outlets to Andy Sheritz. But Martin catches up with him with a good burst of speed. Sherrod somehow hung on to that to his cross. Here's it's gonna Ira Vanderpool. Two goals against UVA. Good speed. Gets by his man. Then checked from behind. Nice play by Shea to get it out of his cross. And G-Town comes the other way. Great defense. Here's Tim Plunkett on long stick. Number 42 Plunkett thinking about a shot. Score! They could not get over to him. 
and Syracuse man was trying to cut over. He had a guy screening him off, and he could not make the transition out of the slot and get over on the wing and just unmolested. Number 42 all the way down that side, Tim Plunkett, 5'11", 190 pound defenseman, takes a left hand shot. And you see that they did not get to him until he was right on top of Gebhardt. Smiley tries to slide over, but it's way too late. So that's what I was talking about. Get a shot on the young goalie. Make him know that you're here. Get him thinking a little bit. And Gebhardt gets a one by him. Perhaps not his fault. Goes back to the faceoff circle where it's 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one game, Dale, 11-09 to go in the first quarter for Plunkett. Not only his first goal of the season, but first shot of the season as well. Did not register a shot against Butler in that Georgetown victory on Saturday. Physical play inside. Fatopoulos able to grab it with a long stick and tries to control on the offensive end. He'll get off the field and Syracuse will bring a short stick offensive player in his place as soon as he can cross the midfield line. Doug Jackson will come in on attack. Good charging play for the Orange again. Syracuse looking for the opportunity. Unable to get that shot off and get it through. 10.48 to go in the first. And you know, Syracuse is talking about what happened on that breakaway with number 42, Plunkett getting down there. Who was supposed to pick him up? And Fotopoulos, who has been playing a close defense and actually been playing big stick midi now. Ooh, off the off top the pipe. pipe. Again, second time they've rung the pipe. Jeff Ooh. Lowe from Liverpool gets hammered in there, number 23. And eventually Wooten able to grab the ball. He'll outlet for Georgetown coming the other way. Exciting action inside is Scott Boffman now will bring into the offensive end for Georgetown. He'll wait for his fellow offensive player on attack, Greg McCavera, number 12, who's back out there. Well, they're double teaming him. They got two guys open, being guarded by one, way up on top, and there's one right feet. there. Shot there, and a goal. McCavera, number 12, gets it from the top of the box. A whistler right by Jason Gebhardt. And it's 2-1 Georgetown a lead with 10-13 to go in the first. Once again, Syracuse defense having trouble picking people up. Both of those guys were up there, two of them just signaling for the ball. They take a left-handed shot, and uh, Smiley came over late and hit him, and that's going to give them man-up opportunity. So once again, Syracuse having a little problem defensively covering open players because he was all by himself. Two guys at the top being guarded by Rourke Denver. He couldn't guard them both. They went to the open man, and that uh, cost Syracuse another goal, and now they're going to be man down. I think. Jason Gebhardt, the SU goalie, sophomore from Camillus in West Genesee High School, his first career start. That was against UVA last weekend. 10 13 to go in the first quarter. Georgetown has taken the lead. McCavera made quite a debut in his college lacrosse opener. Three goals and an assist against Butler in that victory over the Bulldogs on Saturday. And now he has a goal here in tonight's game to give Georgetown a one goal lead early on. In a man up situation, as we said, Smiley out for a late hit, an illegal body check. So Syracuse is in a little bit of a problem here. Man up, Brandon works along with Syracuse traditionally. Offensive player Dan Shea. I'm sorry, just gonna say Syracuse traditionally very good man down defense. Cutting inside, great play. That behind the back shot, not quite there though. Brennan was able to squeeze off a fantastic looking shot, but the accuracy not quite there. And Gebhardt able to get a piece of it. Long outlet pass toward midfield. Kevin Leonard, long stick. Oh, trouble. Defensive player. He's only a freshman, six foot one, intercepted. Here come the Hoyas and Dan Brennan. They were able to get the ball. They had more people at the at the ball. And when the ball went down, there were three blue jerseys picking it up. And once again, they're going to take advantage. They are still man up. Now, so penalty finally releases yes. as Ryan Cummings from Nottingham High School is on. But Georgetown, after being really manhandled in the first few minutes of this game, now has taken control offensively, really taking their time in terms of getting off high percentage shots. That's the Hoyas' style. They are not a run and gun type team. That's not the way they like to come out and play. McCaver has one goal already, carries in the right wing. They're really stacking up out on, in front of the crease there, hoping to get a jump all open. Good hit from behind, a lot of physical play inside. Shea had a chance to get that one, could not. Fenzel comes away with it, number seven, initially. Number and it's controlled by Dan Brennan. Here comes Georgetown again, very patient offense. And I tell you, Dale, physical play as well for the Hoyas. Well, they, that's a Dave Yurick uh, Hobart-type style. And one of the things they're trying to do is get this 
Syracuse goalie gets some shots on them, and they've had some good opportunities, and they're trying to get the defense also. They have not played together as a, as a close defense. We had a couple of converted uh, defensive minis, and Smiley, who played a lot last year, is actually the only guy who's coming back. So it's a little bit of the coordination and, uh, with the goalie and the close defenseman they've been trying Shea. to take advantage of. All right, Shea around the goal, and they'll work it with Jim Fenzel, number seven. Backing in. On uh, number 47, Kevin Leonard, who's a freshman, and we're sure he'll pick on him throughout this game. Meehan has got it now, top of the box. Good patience by Georgetown. Dan Shea, very quick. He's a smaller player, but kind of a jitterbug out there. He'll work it right back to Dan Martin, the All-American midi. Right-handed cradle, seven and a half minutes to go first period. 2-1, Georgetown up. Martin carrying in, hit from behind, no penalty. Nice Leonard job. Chance that one, it's outletted finally to Rourke Denver on long stick. Rourke across the midfield line. Tries to get by Shea. Does so. Still has it with a long stick. Thinking about a shot. Bouncer. Saved by Wooten. Rebound loose. Through the crease. Calvin had a chance at it. Could not come up with it. Wychulis will for Georgetown. Exciting action in front. McCavera lost possession at midfield. And finally regains with Casey Powell right behind him. Casey Powell Good swipe check. and gets it away from him. What a job. Good pressure by... Casey Paul just shows you have to be able to play offense and defense. This is going to be a good one. Loose ball. Shea avoids a big hit. Gets by his man. Shea, Shea again. Yeah. He set the offense. That's the style we talked about. You know, it looked like he had a thought there, Dave, of, uh, of, of trying to take the shot or force it. But I, I think that's the kind of thing. That's good coaching. He did a good job. Syracuse has a shot lead so far at 7-5. But you wouldn't know it from the last five minutes or so. The Hoyas are just controlled. In front, scoop shot right through the crease by McCaver. Out of bounds, Georgetown the closest to it. And the Hoyas will control. Substitutes come in now for SU. Long stick, Mike Smiley is back in. Powell will come out along with Sam Volan. He is a junior at 6'2", 210 from Montclair, New Jersey. Matt Alexander's in number 30. He's a defensive middie with a short stick, and they really like him. And uh, they're trying to get some things happen defensively here. Smiley. Georgetown carrying in again as McCavera putting on a lot of pressure. Smiley just fresh off his chain, so he's got some fresh legs to work with on defense. Georgetown a smaller, quicker team, Dale. It looks like early on SU's having a little problem keeping up with them. Yeah, a little problem with the speed. In this is front wide open. McCavera, instead of shooting passes, nice save. goes off to Fenzel. And eventually Gebhardt able to stick that one away. Outlets to Ryan Cummings at midfield. Poor pass. Now that stopped the fast break. They could not, had they got it out, Gebhardt's pass just a little short. But uh, Syracuse going to have to settle it down and play a little bit of a half-court game here. So the orange down as we roll to the 5.30 mark of the first quarter. 2-1 game. Jim Morrissey, co-captain from Scanning Atlas, behind the cage to Rob Kavavit. Wychulis works on him. And oh, nice, nice poke check as he grabs it right away from him. Wychulis, number five on long stick, worked that away from Kavavit, which is no easy feat. Tim Plunkett has one of the Georgetown goals. Outlets to Rienzo, number 17, brings it to the offensive end, and Georgetown systematically is controlling this game. Good push from behind, no whistle against the Orange. Kind of lucky as Fotopoulos with a big time hit. Carcaterra trying to avoid contact. Morrissey gets by his man. Here comes Jim Morrissey in. He's got Doug Jackson. A pass instead of a shot as they went to Doyle. And that one goes out of bounds. Yes, you will have it. Uh, Georgetown got a stick up on it. They're lucky that they did because he was wide open uh, on the other side. But uh, they managed to get a stick up on it and keep it away from Matt Doyle. Doyle will get the ball. 4.54 to go in the first quarter. Georgetown has a 2-1 lead. Matt Doyle who has done an incredible job, we're told, by the SU coaches, rebounding from a very difficult knee injury. Tore some ligaments, but able to come back fully and has played very well so far this season. Morrissey backing in, trying to get an edge on his man. One of the better ball handlers you see as well. On midfield, Paul Carcaterra. And a sloppy pass. Cavett cannot handle that one. While Chulis is just going to watch it go out of bounds, and the Hoyas take over. So far, I would say the transition game has, has favored the Hoyas, the speed that you talked about. And also, Syracuse defense has had a couple of problems picking people up. And you know what? That's the obvious one. The less obvious is the fact the transition game, when the ball's down, the defense's guys they've had for the last couple of years were so quick and so good at getting that ball up. You got a little bit of a fall off there. But, uh, you know, as we say, it's early in the season, and uh, Syracuse still working, trying to get their timing down. 
two glaring problems that SU had, Dale, against Virginia on Saturday. They were outshot by the Cavaliers 54-39 in the second half, 28-13, as you see the ground ball stat. Right. Ground balls are pretty much even, but possession time and shots were a big problem that Coach Simmons, Desco, and Donahue want to work on in this game tonight. And so far, they've been getting out ground ball in this game, 12-6, which sometimes isn't a very good statistic, but it is here that shows you they've been getting to the ball. Georgetown has. Cavett behind the cage. A moment ago, he was checked nicely by Dan Wachulis. Here's Casey Powell. So far, has been held in check. Casey Powell, strong left-handed cradle and a spin, a feed. That shot from Jackson wide. Good backup by Cavett, though. And SU will still have it as we're down to 3.45 to go in the first. Still a 2-1 Hoya lead. Rob Cavett will trigger play. Member of the all-final four team a year ago down at College Park. Vanderpool can't find the handle. And the Hoyas look to come away again with it. DiGiovanni, number two, able to grab that one. And he'll outlet to Rienzo with a long stick. Vanderpool trying to get back on him defensively. And Georgetown again Open. has the set. Hoyas have numbers, and that seems to be the case when they're breaking out. Dan Brennan in midfield behind the cage. Nice intercept by Powell. Reads the passing lane beautifully, and he'll bring it to the offensive zone himself. Powell pushed a couple of times. Ready to go out of bounds. Do we have a penalty call or what? No, he's on, on the, the line, line. So they're going to call him out of bounds. That was a great play. Number 11, Dan Martin. They're All-American. Third-team All-American. Big guy. 6'2", 195, you can see that he did a nice job of playing defense and he forced the sophomore from Carthage over the sideline and that's going to give the Hoyas the ball back. Martin, not at all, Dale, intimidated by Casey Powell's impressive credentials coming in. Said, hey, you're in my turf now. I'm going to shove you out of bounds if I can. Did a great job on defense. Under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Hoyas have a 2-1 lead and the ball. It's been an interesting game in terms of momentum and possession changes. SU, after a few minutes, the open the game really dominated, but since then, Georgetown has really controlled. There's a shot and another goal by the Hoyas. Working well on offense. Number 36, Doug Meehan. The 5'9", 155-pound junior on midfield scores it, and Georgetown leads 3-1. Now, you look at Gephardt as, as you're going to see, he's got a left-handed goalie now, and then he just, he gets down the stick side, and uh, he just got enough of a break. Watch right there. There's the break. And he right-hand shot on the left-handed goalie, and uh, he put it stick side, and that will give goal number three to Georgetown with 2.37 left. Both second goalies goal. left-handed, by the way. All right, second goal of the season for Doug Meehan. Hoyas in a bit of a shocker here at the Dome tonight. A 3-1 lead, 2.37 to go in the first. Another face-off here for Matt Georgetown. Pappas, yeah. the sophomore number 10, able to win another face-off, and... So far, they've taken two of the last three. Price trying to make some contact at midfield, but loses sight of his man again. Georgetown looking to break in. Boys with that patient style. Steve Iorio, number six, brings in. Plays a lot of defensive midi as well in the short stick. Pass to the top of the box. That one, Gebhardt able to stop from McCavera, who has scored once already. Gebhardt's outlet not good. That's what Coach Simmons also talked to us Dale, before the game. Some of his outlet pass is not too accurate. Well, that's, that's what happens when you get a, a new goalie and a new defense. And uh, they did not have a good outlet pass. So once again, that ground ball statistic is important. And that's going to be one more for Georgetown. They picked it up and another chance to reset. Scott Boffman in on midfield, number 15. He's getting some time as well. Using a lot of different guys out there as Dave Urich, Iorio's shot goes wide. Backed up, though, well by the Hoyas. Minute 35 to go and counting in the first quarter. Dave Urich's team has two-goal lead so far. McCavera, left-handed cradle. Passes around the perimeter to Mike Boyle. He's a second-line attackman. Greg Peters, number nine, out there as well. So second line players on this rush getting time for the Hoyas. Tubby Price watches Iorio. Rolling down toward a minute to go in the first quarter. Hoyas lead it by two. Iorio streaks in. Shot goes wide of Gebhardt. But again, Georgetown there to back it up in the person of Mike Boyle. Not a bad shot in that they had backup. It wasn't a real good shot on goal, but good backup, as you said. Then the Hoyas get the ball back. Mike Boyle, one minute straight up to go in the first. Works in the top of the box for Boffman. 
Swinging around from McCavera. Right-handed cradle on the right wing. McCavera is quick, trying to get by his man. Still has possession. Hit hard. What a check from Toby Price as he laid in to Greg McCavera on attack. And the Orange looking to break out the other way. Mike Smiley on long stick. Six foot six, former West Genesee Wildcat, brings into the offensive zone. Does his job and gets it off to a fellow Central New Yorker and Jim Morrissey. Now left-handed cradle. Morrissey backing into his defender, trying to make things happen against Steve Schumer. Morrissey still has it. We're down to 13 seconds left in the quarter. Good defense so far by the Hoyas. They've really been able to stick with all the Syracuse cuts. This is Jeff Lowe from Liverpool trying to get in on oh. that shot behind the back by Sherritt. Sticked aside by Georgetown. And that ends the first quarter. The Hoyas bench is absolutely pumped as they're jumping up and down. And why not? After one quarter of play from the Carrier Dome, Georgetown has a 3-1 lead on the third-ranked Syracuse Orangemen. We're back with more from the Carrier Dome right here on Super Sports. Stay with us. And welcome back to the Carrier Dome at the end of the first quarter. It is Syracuse trailing Georgetown 3-1 in the uh, home opener for the season for Syracuse. A couple of the coaching legends in this building tonight, Roy Simmons and Dave Yurick, obviously well-known in Central New York. Thought we'd give you some numbers to crunch for these two during their careers. How about 423 wins in 42 years on the sideline? You'd need four hands to fit all their championship rings, guys. They've got 16 together, and they could put together 16 teams made up all of all Americans with three guys left over to take on the three of us three on three. Guys? <laughs> Beth, thanks a lot. Yeah, impressive credentials to say the least between these two gentlemen. They have seen the gold, as they say in the business, and Georgetown right off the faceoff of the second quarter, able to control and get a good shot off on Cage. Gebhardt stops it, the Orange look to break the other way. Here comes Casey Powell, the right-handed cradle runs right into Dan Shade, has lost possession. Look, he may have lost his footing for a moment. Cavett regains, and Syracuse will still have in the offensive zone until look out. Dan Wychulis comes out of nowhere to strip it. I'll tell you, Dale, Wychulis has had a whale of a game on defense so far. Very good so far. Boyers will come in the other way. Meehan, who scored one of the three Georgetown goals in the first quarter. Now, SU has been down before, certainly, in games like these early in the season, but I don't think anyone is completely shocked. Well, this that George, certainly can happen. This Georgetown team is also highly regarded. He's been there a while. It takes a while to build them up, and they feel that this is the, the year that he's going to be able to do it. Looks, Looks like a crease violation yeah. call against Georgetown there within the ring around Jason Gebhardt's cage. So the Hoyas will turn it over. They will, Urich. they will contest this, too. Watch them go after Syracuse. Make them clear it. Now when you have an inexperienced goalie, that's not a good pass to Rourke Denver, who somehow able to grab that one and basically stop it with his legs. That would have been a turnover deep in SU's end. Here comes Denver the other way. Senior co-captain Rourke Denver, who for most of his career was a long stick defensive mini, now is on close defense. So he has changed his role this season quite a bit. And as we said in the opening broadcast, SU has lost three All-American. Count them, three close defenders gone from last year's team. Vanderpool lost possession for a moment. Ira Vanderpool regains. Tough for you defense. Very physical play has really been one of the big characteristics of the game so far. Vanderpool streaking in, lost the edge. Sherritts couldn't handle that nice pass inside. Carcatello regains top of the box. And SU will reset. Morrissey in the right wing, left-handed cradle. Just over two minutes into the second quarter. Orange down by a pair of goals to Georgetown tonight. Sherritts. Works in the right wing for Cavett behind the cage. Doyle lost possession. Shots pretty much even. That's the case in SU's game with Virginia as well. Georgetown has one more. Wachulis. <laughs> Dale, we're going to mention this guy's name a lot. But a bad pass to Carcaterra on the outlet. Paul Carcaterra streaks in, and he scores! Carcaterra makes Georgetown pay for a poor outlet pass. They handed it right to him. And it's a 3-2 game. Do a couple spectacular things right and then not get the pass out. As you said, Wachulis made a great play but uh, all by himself after he gets the uh, ball uh, from a pad pass Car Carcaterra streaks down and it's just a uh, shooting fish in the barrel to use a cliche it was all himself Carcaterra 
now he's up the one and one and Syracuse down by only one Syracuse needs a face off right here Dave they really could use one and, and get a little bit of uh, offensive action back they have not gotten one the last couple times let's see what they come up with here here they get oh not yet now they got it yep. finally possession from Ryan Cummings so SU again the offense Bryce had that one broken up right in front of him Syracuse trying to regain Powell great job just to get possession that's Doyle now with it and Matt Doyle will reset Doyle brings in, being watched by Tim Plunkett. Lost possession, good strip by Plunkett. Eli Wooten looks for an outlet pass. Finds his man. Scott Boffman brings into the offensive zone. Left-handed cradle and a shot by Boffman and a score! Scott Boffman on the left wing. Didn't appear to be too much of a threat, I'll tell you, Dale. Looked like Gebhardt had a very good look at that one. I mean, there was no one screaming him, screening him. And a screaming shot goes right by him for a goal. These are the ones that you want to come up and save. Uh, they're the ones that are, are savable. And it, you're right, it just came stick side, left-handed goalie, and you're going to get a good ground level look at it. And he did see it the whole way, but it's one of those little bounces. And Boffman uh, is now one and one, and a two-goal lead again for Georgetown. Boffman, a freshman as well, very young Georgetown team this year. It's 6'1", 170-pounder from Ellicott City, Maryland. So far... Georgetown having its way with SU on faceoffs. Price this, wins this one. Doyle, a shot and a goal from Rob Cavavit on the right wing. Very quick execution, fast break play. Right off the faceoff, and the Orange Men have scored again. Well, that's exactly what they needed. They needed to do something, come up with a faceoff. As I said, Doyle got the ball set. Watch him on the left side, then gets rid of it. Kind of a look-off pass. And Cavavit with that left-handed shot comes up with... Uh, Number three for Syracuse, just a real nice job of uh, getting the fast break going and, and getting the ball over to the guy in the right shooting lane. Two goals for Rob Cavett in this game. Now up to four in the season. Came in two and two after the game with Virginia. Price trying to gain possession for Syracuse. Lost the handle for a moment. Nearly picked off by Fenzel. Georgetown looks to come away with it. Iorio Wheel at midfield. So the Orange scoring two of the last three goals. To pull within one. Hoyas up 4-3. Great pressure by Casey Powell from behind against Iorio. And we may have a penalty or a delay of game call. What do we have there? Yeah, failure so to advance. Right. Yeah, failure to advance. They violation did not get the ball Georgetown. out of their own defensive zone. And that's what's the kind of thing that you play in good defense. And even if you don't necessarily steal the ball, you get a chance. Now they come right back. See how quickly they reset in lacrosse, Dave. They do not give you time to say, oh, gee, we made a mistake. Let's think a little bit about it. They got the ball back, and that's exactly what happened there. They and weren't ready Jim for that. Jim Morrissey from Scotty Atlas Dale, who was able to get that goal while we were away for just a moment. Syracuse is tied at 4 all. It was so quick, we couldn't get a camera on him. He received it on the right wing, and from about 10 yards out, blistered one right by Eli Wooten, an easy score. He was wide open. And the game now tied up at four. So the Orange on a little run of their own here with 11-10 to go in the second. You got 20 seconds to get the ball back in play, and the officials will get you going right away. There's the faceoff look, four and four. For a while there, Georgetown, I think they had three or so in a row. Syracuse has come up with a couple, and that's the result. Matt Another one. Hoppus takes it again for the Georgetown Hoyas, working against Matt Alexander, who's a sophomore from West Genesee High School. Redshirted a year ago. Vanderpool into the offensive end. Watched by Dan Martin, who plays some defensive midi as well. Rob Cavett already with the two goals on the right side, being really watched closely now by Dan Wachulis, who obviously is their best defender and draws the top offensive player out of the field against them. Vanderpool, top of the box. Morrissey in the right wing will carry around the cage. Got to watch out when you give him a running start. Jim Morrissey, quick flick pass, tried to go in a one-timer to Cavett. That one through the That's crease. Pass. Great job by Cavett to keep it in bounds. What a job as he kept it inside the line and avoided the turnover. Doyle with a right-handed cradle behind the cage. Wachula's all over him, but SU maintains possession. Rolling down to 10 minutes to go in the first half. Morrissey will reset. Trigger man from behind the cage this time. Syracuse and the Hoyas are tied. Morrissey backs in. Jim Morrissey, quick oh, flick shot. That one through the crease out of bounds. And Cavett there for the backup. Syracuse still has it. Got to make sure you have backup. That was not a real good shot, high percentage shot, but he did have backup, so uh, Cavett was going to get it. And uh, he's going to draw Wychulis, the guy, the senior 6'4", 200-pound defenseman. 
and uh, he's played very well. He is a bruiser as well, very physical player on close defense for the Hoyas. Doug Jackson behind the cage. He had a great run in the Final Four also for Syracuse last year. Second line attack, Blair Jackson pushed from behind, no whistle, Doug Jackson still with it, blistering shot. Wooten didn't know where it was behind him for a moment, and then rakes it in. He'll outlet from his crease. Oh, nice outlet. Pass toward the middle of the field, and he finds Doug Kanick. And Georgetown now will set the offense up as well. Take some time here to get a good half-field offensive set. That is their style we've seen so far tonight from Dave Urich's Hoyas. Dan Shea, top of the box. Carcaterra on defensive mid, he works against him. I think if the Hoyas came in at this point, tied 4-4 with nine minutes to go in the first half, Dale, if you told them that before the game, they'd be pretty excited. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially on the road at the Dome. Very tough place to play. Beth talked about at the start of the broadcast, nearly impossible for the opposition to win in. Although last year, a couple of victories for opposing teams, Hopkins and Virginia early on. That shot from Dan Martin over the cage. Gebhardt sticked it aside and able to get that one a fling right over his cage. Gebhardt had 27 saves against uh, Virginia. That's impressive. And uh, they've uh, they've tested him here. He's, he's come up with a couple of good saves. Right now, they're going to have to come up with a good clear as Syracuse gets the ball. And that has been a little bit of a problem. Good pass this time across the uh, field. Right. Fotopoulos working to Denver. And again, those two guys were long stick defensive middies, not close defenders coming in for this season. So different positions to adjust to. A little bit of philosophy difference. Now you gotta yeah. get rid of the ball with that big stick. There's three North or four Denver. blue shirts around you. You gotta get rid of it. Tim Plunkett broke it up. Nice job by Powell who was really manhandled hard. And out come Georgetown again. Shea works with his long stick player. Rienzo brings in back to Shea. Martin and on the wing they go. That one right through the crease. Dan Brennan puts the shot on Cage trying to back that one up. There's Jim Fenzel, number seven. Looked like he was able to do it. Georgetown still has it with 8.04 to go in the first half. Interesting, the official uh, on the ball was screened, and he looked up to the other official who was down the sideline. Cooperated very well and uh, decided who should get the ball. It was very close, and Georgetown will get it. Transition game at Georgetown, although they didn't score on that. Great passing, great movement. Fenzel triggers play. From the goal line extended right. Meehan will work to Martin, and they will set the offense again. Rarely see Georgetown rush into any kind of ill-advised shots, Dale. That's always been the style with Dave York's teams. Same thing at Hobart. Take the high percentage shots. Shea Jump. Top of the box, double team. Nice defense. Coming over to help out on that one was Harvey Sacrin, who's a freshman from West Genesee High School as well. Rienzo trying to get across on that at midfield. Offside. All right. Uh, go against Georgetown. So SU will get it back with 7.27 to go in the second. Technical foul. Let me know time served. Syracuse will just get possession. You see how quickly they're right back into it. Look at Dave Yurick. On the right wing, Powell charges in against his man. Very difficult to stop him. Renzo's trying. Powell lost the handle. In case he's been a little frustrated in this game. Hasn't been able to really explode offensively. Tries to feed a cutting. Sherritz. Nice save. To Calvin. And a great play by Wooten to stick that one in. Able to grab it in his cross. Tremendous heads up play. Hard hit on number 39, Dan Kanick, but he comes away with it and into the offensive zone. Didn't force it. Just what you were talking about before. He did not force it. He knew he had people in the box who were going to come in, so he walked back out and set it up. Dan Martin, top of the box, left-handed shot right through the crease. Gebhardt did not have to save that one. Back up by Fenzel. And Georgetown still has it. 6.45 to go first half. Game is tied. Four piece. A lot of momentum switches we've seen so far. Boffman has one goal, scored in a bouncer at the start of the period. Behind the cage. There's a lot of time off the clock with this kind of half Watch field right game. Kutaya from Homer. That one by Boffman through the zone. And out of bounds. Georgetown, though, again, a nice job. Iorio there to back it up, and then SU brings on some more defensive players. You know, one of that new rule change, uh, you don't get your players off and on. You're going to have to have guys who normally play defense are going to have to play offense and vice versa, so that new rule change creates some problems, and that's a real team management, which happens down in the box. So a couple of West Genesee Wildcats here on defense at the moment, and Sakharin and Alexander. Shot so far, Hoyas still up by one at 15-14. 
Boffman in front. Nice breakup play by Cummings. And Ryan will try to bring it out the other way. Good double team, though, on the stop of the clear. That's been a big key. Yes, it has. They swarm the ball. Now bad pass and a big stick down there trying to handle the ball in the attack zone. Sakran fresh off a national, uh, national championship. <laughs> national championship, the team won here at SU, a state championship in Class A that West Genesee won at Coin Field last spring. And a timeout call by Syracuse with 5.52 to go in the second. So head coach Roy Simmons Jr. wants to talk things over with his Orangemen. Team tied for all with 10th ranked Georgetown at the Dome tonight. Check in now with our sideline reporter, Beth Bowen, for a couple of words. Beth, what do you have for us? Thank you very much, Dave. Just wanted to let everybody know that uh, Mr. Carcaterra and Mr. Cavett are former high school teammates at Yorktown High School. They have three of the four goals for the Orangemen tonight and in pretty good company as, of course, uh, the Nelson brothers, Sim and Tom, came from Yorktown High School as well. Carcaterra is the all-time leading goal scorer at Yorktown, while Cavett just trails the Nelson brothers in points scored all-time at Yorktown. By the way, they finished out their high school careers with three straight state championships before heading to Syracuse. Dave? All right, Beth, thanks a lot. Talk a lot about high school powerhouses and on Long Island, no question, year in and year out, turn out some tremendous programs. So far in net, Dale, pretty good game. Turn in from Eli Wooten. Yeah, Wooten, uh, a guy left-handed goalie. Watch him track this one, come up. And one of the things that I'm impressed with is Watch how well you, I don't know if you're going to see at the end here, but he made a great outlet pass afterwards. And that's one of the things a, a goalie has to be able to do because that starts it the other way. And if you can make the save, all well and good. But if you can start the offense going the other way in a fast break, it's, it's, a, it's a real benefit, and Wooten's been able to do it. As you saw more, Jason Gebhardt talking with a former high school teammate, and Mike Smiley on long stick close defense. Gebhardt, before Virginia's game in which Dale mentioned, had 27 saves. <laughs> Impressive well, start. He had not started a game or played in a regulation game since 1991 because of injuries and having to sit behind guys like Alex Rozier, who was a great goalie for SU after coming from Herkimer Community College and played at Syracuse for two years. So the Orange on offense, Carcaterra, a Long Islander, as Beth was telling us about, great career. Works through Doug Jackson, who's a Central New Yorker, former J.D. Red Ram. Jackson backs in. SU kind of uncharacteristic with patience. Like to see them fast break. That's been their style in the past. Jackson swings around and scores. Doug Jackson fighting off his man on defense. Somehow got that one to go. What an effort. As Jackson scores, it gives SU a lead. Finally, the Orange went up in this game. Yep, it's just a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one move. D. Giovanni is guarding him, but he gives him enough room, and he puts a low hopper right between the legs of the goalie. Watch right there. You can see how quickly it went, and you get a good shot of it as they finally able to get a lead here. Syracuse goes up by one, and Jackson, nice shot as he dumps it past Eli Wooten. Second goal of 1996 for Doug Jackson. The Orangemen now up in the faceoff department. Price Promptly loses one to Iorio and Georgetown controls. So Syracuse back in the lead. The Orange led 1-0, and after that, it was all Georgetown, taking as many as a two-goal lead at one point. SU now trying to make a comeback. Talking about matchups before the game, one of the matchups they wanted, Dan Martin. They wanted Syracuse number 30, Matt Doyle on him. Excuse me, Matt Alexander, I should say. Got 29 and 30 mixed up, and uh, that's what they have. Shea carries with Toby Price on him. Toby, one of the larger midfielders you see, about 210 pounds, and she probably gets knocked over, as I say that, by Shea, who somehow maintains possession. Devin Ackerman chasing. And able to catch up with him. Martin behind the cage. Nice defensive play by SU. Able to stick that one away it was Doyle. That the outlet pass not there, and Meehan makes him pay with the interception. Fenzel then on the left wing. In oh. front, they feed that one to a wide open man in Brennan, but he couldn't quite pull the trigger. Good defense from behind if Fatopoulos runs it down. One of the problems they had against Virginia, giving them too many shots. Let's see what they do. Once again, ball down. Big Sticks having trouble handling the passes. Picked off by Georgetown. And the Hoyas bringing the other way. Rienzo on the intercept. 
Some of the passes at the midfield trying to start penetration, Dale, have not been crisp enough. And Georgetown really has done a great job in heading those off and bringing the other way. Number 26 in, uh, Greg Hubschman for Syracuse, was the guy who couldn't handle that pass, playing defense right there, number 26. Carrying and shooting. Whoa. Martin, that one may have rung off the pipe as well. Or Gebhardt got a piece, tough to tell. And Dan Martin just regains calmly and coolly. They'll reset the offense with three and a half to go in the first half. Oh, nice strip. Man, lost control. Toby Price with a great play. He charges in. Full head of steam the other way. Price has got a couple steps on his bed. Powell, good fake, a pass. A shot there by Doyle. And that one a bit wide, but Morrissey there on the backup. Pretty good defense by Plunkett. Forced him to take perhaps not the hardest shot, and uh, it went in back, but Syracuse, good backup. Price is off after that great rush a moment ago, and Morrissey triggers play. 3.13 to go. Tries to go to Sherritts in a one-time play, and he couldn't quite control. Good Simmons told us before the game, very pleased with the effort of Andy Sherritts. Number 13 had his first goal of the season against the Cavs. And again, Jim Morrissey will start things off. Watch closely by Plunkett. Morrissey in front, shot and a score! Jim Morrissey in the left wing, about 10 yards in front of Wooten. And I'll tell you, Dale, Eli Wooten never saw that one coming. A laser beam right by his shoulder. They've had pretty good luck of starting behind. Now here's Morrissey starting from that left wing behind. And you're going to see him get set. And you're right. Watch the reaction. Whoops. Whoa. Yeah, going up <laughs> on 110 miles an hour, and it's hard to stop. But Syracuse has had good luck going on that stick side from behind. And Morrissey starting from behind. So a little bit... Uh, Less midfield play, a little more attack oriented, starting from behind the cage for Syracuse, and it has given them a 6-4 lead. Second goal of the night for Mojo, as they call him on this team. Fourth of the season. Face-offs, SU up by one right now. And Alexander, former West Jenny Wildcat, will take it. As he battles with Boffman, who has not seen a lot of face-off action this season for Dave York's toys, but maybe he just earned himself some by winning a face-off. He works to Iorio and Georgetown Resets again. You know, this is the time you try some new face-off guys. You've got to find, you can't go through a season with one. You've got to have two or three, and you got only way you find out is give them a chance to play. So the Orange join their largest lead again at two goals. Boffman top of the box, works back to Iorio. Syracuse stays in that tough man-to-man -to -man defense that they've been using so well over the years. Occasionally they'll shift the zone in depending on the situation and the scores that they're working against. Iorio behind the cage, makes a charge in front, shoots and scores! He beats Jason Gebhardt, Steve Iorio, number six, gets the goal to pull the Hoyas to within one. It's 6-5 with 2.16 to go in the second. And we talked about goalies being beaten there. I don't think Gebhardt saw it at all. Well, you know what happened is they, they started behind. He saw it, he reacted, but he didn't get, he didn't get the, the net, the fat part on the stick. He got, of course, you see how quickly it happens. It's easy for me to say that. He <laughs> couldn't get the stick up on it. He couldn't follow up with the chest, and Laero comes up with uh, the fifth goal for Georgetown. It, they did the same thing. They had four guys on the crease and started it behind and just beat them one-on-one, -on -one, and we're going to get a Georgetown timeout. Torres will stop play with 2.16 to go. And so the second goal of the year for Steve Iorio who handles a lot of the face-off duties in the midfield. And the Orangemen still with a one-goal lead, but they just cannot shake Iorio and the Georgetown Hoyas, who came in ranked number 10 with a 1-0 record. And I don't think they're daunted or intimidated at all by playing the Orangemen here in the Dome tonight. No, no, nobody that's coached by Dave Yurick is going to be daunted. Or, yeah, you're going to get a good look at this as the move is made by Iorio from behind, and uh, you're going to get a goalie's eye view, and it's just, you know, it's at 36 square feet you have to defend there, and when you can get a move like that and get a pretty strong shot off as he did, it's going to be very difficult to stop. But if you come up with that save, that's the one that really picks everybody up, And uh, but uh, not able, Gebhard not able to get the good part of the stick on it, and it will... Give up a goal. SU and the Hoyas matched up in the first game of the season back in 1995, last spring. Syracuse rallied late for a 13-8 victory to open up the year. Dan Martin had a couple of goals against the Orange in that game, and he's been a very effective 6'2", 195-pound junior, the All-American. He was 1-1 one one against Butler. 39 career goals and 60 career points coming in. One big stat against the Bulldogs for that Georgetown win to open up the season. They outshot Butler 51-18, and we've seen very effective shot count against Jason Gebhardt tonight. Well, you know, they, they haven't exactly slowed it down, but they have taken very good shots and are very, very patient, which is, uh, which is important because 
people will tell you, you do not want to get into a run and gun with Syracuse. And uh, they have taken advantage of Syracuse where they could, put a little pressure on the defense, having problems uh, adjusting in a new defense, and they've uh, done exactly what they had to do to stay in the game. Matt Alexander and Matt Pappas will take the face off at midfield for SU and Georgetown respectively. 2.16 to go in the first half. Great game so far. Two top 10 teams going at it. And Georgetown again able to win the faceoff. Steve Iorio scored a moment ago, brings into the offensive end. Iorio did a nice job of coming in from the wing and coming up with a faceoff. The faceoff man didn't get it, but Iorio did. And now uh, they're making some changes. And he got a man open in the slot yeah, momentarily. Brian Price seeing some time top of the box. First time we've seen Price, number 14. A second line midfield, now kind of running a weave here. They did it on Maybe. the right side before they're doing it on the left side yeah. now. Killing some time leading into the half. The Giovanni is out there as well, number two. Some of the second line attack and middies getting time here. Mike Corey, first time we've seen him. Obviously, this is a specialty situation for Dave York's team. Maybe he'll call a timeout and then bring the first line players back on. Corey's still with it. Feeding, they score! How about that with a minute 15 to go? Di Giovanni, number two in front, able to pull the trigger and get himself a goal on the feed from Corey. Well, they were very patient, and what Corey did is he's waiting to see somebody jump and leave number two, D. Giovanni alone. And watch what he does. He comes right. Now watch. See D. D. Giovanni move, and then he says, I see him open. It was just a perfect pass, and nothing Gebhardt could do. So you got to give, obviously, D. Giovanni made a nice shot, but number 33 is the guy, Corey, who waited until the right possible moment and then threaded the needle. Dave Urex Hoyas. Have tied this game at six. Now Price, instead of Alexander, will take the face off. Alexander there, though, to scoop up the loose ground ball. 6-6 six, six game, heading down to a minute to go in the first half. Matt Alexander was a quarterback in high school, now leading the offense here for SU. Shot by Fotopoulos over the cage, and Syracuse will reset. Jackson scored a few moments ago in the second quarter. Under a minute to go here in the first half. Syracuse trying to get some different people in as... They've got a bit of time, up to about 45 seconds, you can see right there. Going to get a good shot off. Morrissey's also scored in our second quarter. Pass a little bit high for Sheritz, but he's able to regain. That pass just too high for Carcaterra. Now a battle with Denver as he fights hard with number three, Dan Brennan at midfield, who's going to win the battle. Looks like Georgetown will take it over. Well, that's a, that's a situation where you want to get the last shot, maybe go in up by one. But now it looks like you might not get the last shot off. So now you got to play a really tough defense. Fortunately for Syracuse, the ball went out of bounds. They get some defensive people in, some specialists, and uh, that's what we're going to see. So just half a minute to go in the first half. Dan Shea, top of the box. We'll start things off for Georgetown. Good burst of speed, trying to get by Ira Vanderpool. Here's Dan Martin. Good change of hands. Martin shoots that one through the crease. Gebhardt may have gotten a stick on it. Out of bounds, Fenzel there for the backup. 13 seconds to go in the first half. Hoyles will get at least one more run at it to try to take a halftime lead here at the Dome tonight. Change the man with the ball. Is it Meehan? It's Doug Meehan who's scored once in this game. Starts it off. Down to 10 seconds. Meehan watched by Alexander. Doug Meehan still has possession. Trying to get an angle for a shot. Me and cannot. Alexander Nice D put in front. That one bounces over the cage and out of bounds, and that will do it. So the first half comes to a close from the carrier dome tonight. Dave Urex, Georgetown Hoyas. Right in this game, the score is 6 6. So Dale, the Orangemen, and Georgetown knotted up and a bit of a surprise. Syracuse usually blowing teams out by this point of a game. Well, they got, uh, they got a new team to work with. They got some things to work out. Uh, it's not over yet. Let's hear now from head coach Roy Simmons Jr. is standing by on the field with our own Beth Mowens. All right, thank you very much, Dave. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about some of the adjustments now you're thinking about making at the half. Well, we're going to have to get uh, more of a ball game out of our midfield. Uh, they have a very good close defense. And uh, well, we've gotten several goals off our close attack. We're not getting the firepower we normally get. Uh, I'll have to give credit to Georgetown close defense. We're going to have to beat them up top. They seem to have been able to do a good job of controlling the tempo and the pace of this game. What kinds of things will you have to do to try and uh, speed things up a little bit? Well, we're going to have to own the ball a little more. We haven't uh, had a real hot hand in the face-off. My, 
my, face, my number one face-off man has uh, hurt a little bit tonight, and he's not getting the second effort. But we've got to own the ball, make him come to us, and uh, I think in the second half, we own the ball a little more. I think we, we'll be okay. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Back upstairs, Dave. All right, interesting to hear the comments of head coach Roy Simmons Jr. In a moment, we'll return to the Caradome. We'll talk about some halftime stats, see some highlights, and look forward to the second half as well. 6-6, six, six, a score at the break. You're watching SU Lacrosse on Super Sports. Welcome back, everyone. Beginning of the second half is set to come up. Georgetown and Syracuse. Now let's go down to Beth Mowen standing by with Georgetown head coach Dave Yurick. Thank you very much, Dave. Coach, I don't mean to sound presumptuous, but I'm assuming you're, you're pleased with the 6-6 halftime tie. Yeah, I am. I, I, I was uh, glad to see us get up and probably even more glad to see us come back after we got down to. Uh, I think we're going to respond. We seem to be responding well to this environment. That was that was a key before the game. How well we'd, uh, how hard we would play, and I think it's going to be uh, interesting. The second half, I think both teams uh, are starting to get a little low in, on fuel. I think that's going to be a little bit of a factor in the second half. How do you go about controlling the tempo? You seem to have the pace your way in the first half. Yeah, at times we do. Sometimes we don't take as good care of the ball as we'd like, but that's. Uh, it's a game of mistakes. That's what we tell our guys. And don't worry about making a mistake. Just just stay in there and keep keep working hard. All right. Thank you very much, thank Coach. You. Best luck in the second half to you, Dave. All right, Greg. Greg, yeah. Boy. Greg, Greg McCabra is controlling, and Beth, thanks very much. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Not very well. Didn't come out right. McCabra, his first shot of the second half as we're underway, about 30 seconds or so, goes just wide. Incidentally, uh, Georgetown didn't have to do the faceoff at uh, penalty, so uh, they got the ball and. Uh, they are now down on attack. Boys in the offensive end. Fenzel on the right wing against SU. And I thought that was an interesting point that Dave York brought up about teams may be a bit tired. One down. Start of the year. They just don't have the last oh. shot to score from Meehan, who rips that one off on the left wing. Doug Meehan, number 36, the junior, with a whistler that Gebhardt couldn't stop. He just takes a nice low shot, very, very fast. Started out low with the stick, brought it up high, and Meehan, watch him start out low, and then brings it up high. So Meehan, 5'9", 155, puts it in, make Georgetown 7-6. Second goal of the game for Doug Meehan. And Georgetown has regained the lead. Been a topsy-turvy game so far. Face-offs. Same as the scoreboard count right now. Hoyas lead it, 7-6. Price yeah, evens cleanly. up that stat. Yep. With a little bit of anger as well, you can see. It's Augusto when he ripped that one off. Well, they're double. They're going to get a penalty call there. A little Slow bit of a hold. penalty flag is coming up. SU have a man up. Morrissey loses possession, so now we'll get our official call. Should be a technical 30-second hold, hold think. coming up. Yep. 14.05 to go in the third quarter. 30-second. Terry McNabb makes the uh, call. Uh, Kurt Lingenfelter uh, lets us know it is a 30-second. So Syracuse will be man up for 30 seconds. Their first goal was, uh, I believe, man up goal. And we have had, not had a lot of penalties. That's one thing that, that that new rule does. Boy, if you're out, you're out for good. You can't run down and, and release him. So Iori of the guilty party. And SU now looking to tie this game up. First possession of the second half. Morris in the slot. Great pass. Doyle was hit hard, though, just as he received it. Couldn't get the shot off. Impressive defense again from Georgetown, especially Dale around the cage. They've been very physical. And that's been a big key so far in this game. There is no release. Brings in the offensive end and Rienzo, 17 with a long stick. Fenzel lost possession. Fatopoulos still trying to gain it, could not. A couple swipes at it, may cost the Orange big time. And it's regained by Georgetown in the offensive zone. Fatopoulos just lost his concentration for a moment and Greg Peters made it pay. Even up now, everybody's even, penalty's over. That's in a nutshell exactly what has been a Syracuse problem. Defense unable to come up with a ground ball and start it the other way, struggled and they've given the ball back to Georgetown. Dan Martin streaks by his defender. Martin in shot and a score, Dan Martin. What a quick release on the right-handed shot, and he's whooping it up. So is the Georgetown bench. Well, they number got, 11, Dan Martin scores. Just gonna say they got beat out at the midfield, and Martin had a, right here, watch, beaten, not able to take the ball out, and nobody gonna slide over and take him before he gets off a nice hard shot, and you're absolutely right. Uh, Jason Gebhard not able to track it down, and that's gonna be a two-goal lead now for Georgetown. Dan Martin second of the season in the G-Town Hoyas now with an 8-6 lead. 13-03 to go in the third. Face-offs dead even at eight apiece so far in this game tonight. Price taking this one 
for the Orange, but still no possession. Price trying to regain, scoop up a ground ball. Looked like SCI had possession for a moment, still loose. Denver scooped it up. Here come the Hoyas again, Fangs on the offensive zone. Same thing we just talked about, inability of those big sticks to come up and track down a ground ball. Of course, it's easy to say, it's probably one of the most difficult things to do in lacrosse is to pick up that ball with that defensive stick when you're in a crowd. Greg McCaver at top of the box. The Boffman, he scored in the first half as well. Fenzo, one of the only players in offense who did not find the net against Jason Gebhardt in the orange. Georgetown threatening to take a three-goal lead as we begin playing the third. Nice defensive play, though. Alexander across on that one. Dangerous outlet pass directly <laughs> into the cross of Gebhardt. Boy, Denver made a dangerous play. Fotopoulos lost it at midfield. Ball still loose, and Christian regains it. Ira Vanderpool has some space, just lost the edge for a moment. Seems like that's been the case tonight. A little concentration lapses for Syracuse. Great check from behind by Kasson on defensive midfield. And Syracuse in retaliation, Cavett some frustration, commits the foul. So a penalty coming up on the orange. We may have a slash here, shot to the head. Let's take a look. I think it's going to be a technical. Yep, just a hold. Yeah, that could have been worse because you see how high it goes to the head there. Yeah, ooh, boy. Number 15, dead as hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New helmets this way by the, uh, this year, by the way, is you get a good look at the helmet. Right. More aerodynamic, a little bit of better peripheral vision, and Cavett will be able to see out of it for 30 seconds right where he sits because he is down for a hold, and that's going to be a man-up opportunity. So, so the Orangemen now are man down, 11.48 and counting in the third and trailing in the game by two goals. Georgetown's Fenzel. Behind the mean, he scored already in the second half. Shea, top of the box for Dan Martin. Back to Shea, wide shoots and scores! Dan Shea, number 13. The 5'9", 170 pound sophomore. He was two and one against Butler and he lights it up against the Orange Orangewood tonight for a 9-6 Georgetown lead. Look at the celebration on the Hoya bench. Just a man up opportunity and that's a, he went low and, and you gotta hope that Gebhardt can stop something like that. It's easy to say, but that's what's going to happen in a man-up situation. They are obviously going to get a good shot off and at most of the time, and Shea comes up with his third goal of the season, and it gives the Hoyas a three-goal lead. Largest lead of the game for Georgetown. Officials are summoning in the substitutes. Doug Jackson comes onto the field for SU. He's alongside Tim Plunkett. Face-offs, Hoyas up by one. Pappas is taking this one against Toby Price. SU facing its largest deficit so far of 1996. They lost the Virginia game by two goals, you remember, in Charlottesville. Here comes Ryan Cummings streaking in, but check from behind, goes through the crease harmlessly. Comes to Jackson, good feet in front. Nice save. Couldn't get a shot off. Doyle could not quite pull the trigger. Get an accurate shot off. Price regains, winds and passes instead. Morrissey, a laser beam, that one's wide. And it goes beyond the goal line, out of bounds. Doyle will trigger play for Syracuse, but a good rush, Dale. That's a good sign. Yeah, they're, they're putting some shots on, got a couple off. Wooten actually got the body on one. It was not, right. as you said, a really accurate shot. Morrissey triggers on the right side. Jim Morrissey watched by Iorio. Out to Andy Sheritz. Sheritz does not have the foot speed of a Cummings on midfield. Or Casey Powell, certainly. Powell has been held in check. What a fantastic job the defense has done on him. Winding his price. That shot stopped, though, by nice Wooten. Save. Never even got to him. They've been stopped in front by defenders. And here comes Casey Powell regaining. Let's see if he can make it. Hit back here. Powell shooting and scoring. Well, it was just up to me to say something about Casey Powell, who really had been held down by the Georgetown defense. Give Dave Yurks D some credit all night long, but he finally breaks free. Well, that's an important ground ball. He just picked up the ground ball, rushed the goal, and really went high on Wooten. And it was really a good goal. You know, I'm not so sure that Paul feels quite as comfortable at the midfield position as he did at attack, right. where he got to work a little bit more from behind the cage. But he looked very good there in an unsettled situation, picking up a ground ball and doing what you have to do to get back in the game. But Dave, you're right. I think they've hustled more. They've gotten on some ground balls. And uh, what they need now is some face-offs. Boffman takes this one with Alexander at midfield. Face-offs, as we saw a moment ago. That even at nine apiece. Number 26 Alexander in there for Syracuse, hard. Devin Ackerman, new right. face. He's a new face to shoot the defense. Alexander really working hard, and a double team, a lot of contact, and a penalty flag is dropped. Looks like a foul coming up against the Orange, but fans here at the Carry Dome do not like it. Let's get the official call. 
We've got a technical hold against the Orange again. Steve Miller detected a hold, and uh, the ball was on the ground. Everybody doing a little bit of, there was a push, and uh, they're gonna, that's a hold, yeah, right there where they kind of, right there where the arm comes down where you're still holding them. But uh, Syracuse will now be man down for it the third time, I believe. Nottingham's Ryan Cummings is the guilty party. Man up goals, Georgetown so far one of two in that stat. Knee in behind the cage to Martin, they'll reset. Fenzel, Roche, he scored in the second half as well. Mean with that quick release, watch him. Martin in front, bouncer, that one sticked aside nicely by Gebhardt. Good collapse defense by Syracuse. Even a better job on the backup as Alexander was there to make sure Syracuse gained possession. Give Fotopoulos credit, watch 27. He's gonna get a stick on it, watch him right there. At number 11, Martin goes by, right there, the stick, and that takes the ball, makes it go high. Here's the problem Syracuse had, clearing the ball with the defenseman. Georgetown, three goals and only four shots in the quarter. Talk about efficiency, that's not bad, huh? 75%. Here comes Alexander as the penalty is released. Alexander, good check though at midfield. Meehan got a nice piece of him and comes away with it. Great speed by Doug Meehan. Spinning and lost the handle. Alexander trying to regain. And it's ripped away by Casson on the long stick, number one. Hard physical play, Rourke Denver on the near side comes away with it. Oh, lost for a moment, I'll tell you, what a hit. That Sherrod took, he took a lick at midfield. The ball goes back to Georgetown, and Dale, you saw the Hoya bench explode a moment ago. Well, one thing I like if you're a Syracuse fan, they are contesting the ground balls with a lot more intensity, I think, than they did in the first half. They're swarming the ball. First half, there were three or four blue jerseys on the ball. Now there's three or four white jerseys to match them. So Syracuse really going after it uh, intensity-wise in the second half. They lost the ball, but I think they did some good things. Syracuse down by two, 9-10 and counting in the third. 9-7 game. Boy is up with possession. And Giovanni had a goal in the first half. A lot of guys scoring, Dale, from Georgetown. A lot of contribution in different sides and facets of their offense. Pass top of the box goes through the crease. Brian Price tries to run oh. down midfield. Kick back by Georgetown. Great job on defense by Rienzo. Now another penalty flag is dropped. Fans are beside themselves. It looks like another penalty coming up on Syracuse. It could be again on Ryan Cummings, who is very upset at the call. They're going to give him one minute on a slash. So let's see if we can see what happens. There's there the. One minute. Well, there was. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know when that was, but. There are a couple of situations right. there. It was, it was Ackerman. On Ackerman. Okay, right. that I will, that I'll buy. Ackerman, uh -huh. I'll buy. I didn't think it was on coming. So, Ackerman. Yeah, there's a new rule this year. Well, that's a new rule. If you slash in the back or the chest, they're, they're kind of keying on that. So that was going to cost Syracuse a minute. And right yeah. away, fourth man up opportunity for Georgetown. So far, operating at 33 percent efficiency. Boffman to Shea. He whistled one by Gebhardt earlier here in the half. Fenzel behind the cage, back to Mia. If they can stop this, it'll really pick them up. Brennan works to Boffman, and they quickly around the cage they go. That shot may have gotten some pipe bounds up high and out of bounds. Fenzel whipped that one toward Gebhardt. Georgetown quickly right back to the action. 30 seconds. Still 30 to go in the non-releasable slash. Shea works in the near side for Mia. And Shea. And the Boffman around the perimeter. Again, patient play. That Whistler just wide. Me and put a nice shot going for the upper corner. Good hustle. Tell you, Gebhardt with a fantastic job on hustle, able to back it up. Coach John Desco, SU assistant, please to see that. Well, now they got to clear the ball, and this has been the problem. Let's see what they come up with. They double team the ball, they give it into the goalie. Goalie's got to look up to the midfield, got to get some help. And they're doing a nice job of zoning up the midfield and going after the goalie. Dangerous pass to absolutely no one. Georgetown picks it off. Boffman coming in. Shot there to goal. That's what happens, Dale. You set that one up perfectly. Scott Boffman intercepts a poor outlet pass. Charges in. He was wide open for an easy one. Yeah, that was the clear. They just zoned him off at the midfield, and they just played hard on the goalie. And uh, the goalie trying to get back in. And when you, you're not set in there, it's very difficult for Syracuse to stop that. But it could have been obviated by a, a good outlet, but they took advantage of him. 
So he is 2-1 and one in the game. Two goals and an assist for Doug Boffman. And Syracuse down by three goals again with 7.39 to go in the third. They really could use a face-off here. Price cannot win it. it. Pappas able to get it, then promptly throws ah. it away over Fenzel's head out of bounds. Or they can get the face-off or have him throw it out of bounds. <laughs> either, either one will work, but the problem is they got to clear it again. Watch him go after him again. And Dave Yorick is sending people out there because he got a goal off the ride the last time, just putting a lot of pressure on Syracuse. And now they're, they're on the goalie. They're making the long pass over to Smiley. They're going to make Fotopoulos make the long pass and make the big stick handle it. So failed clears have been a glaring problem for Coach Simmons Bunch in this game tonight. Great pressure again on Smiley as he's watched closely by McCaver. Sherris in the offensive zone. Carcaterra has a lot of space. Passing up front. That shot rings off the pipe again. Jackson and Whistler. And I don't think Eli Wooten saw, but he'll take the break. A goalie's best friend, those pipes. A lot of them tonight. They've been dented and dinged, and uh, Syracuse will get the ball, however, on the... Uh, being out of bounds uh, right near it when it went out. So Syracuse gets another opportunity. Dale SU and clears in that first game, only 22 of 37 against UVA. So that's a lot of failed clear opportunities. That, as we saw a moment ago from Boffman's goal, can end up in a score for the opposition. Morrissey behind the cage, left-handed cradle being really harassed on defense. Strong defensive effort from Rienzo. Morrissey maintains possession, good strength in the legs there to Ward off that defender. Sherritts, yeah, bad pass. Carcaterra and Price not communicating, and that's been a big problem. I'll tell you, Dale, in a game where you're down by three, you can't afford mistakes like that. Well, you can tell it's early in the season, and I'm certainly not making excuses for them, but it is early in the season, and Syracuse traditionally gets stronger. But some of their basic skills, you look at the turnover, Syracuse up by four in that department, a department you don't want to be in, by the way. Mm, no way. And, uh, but... They've got 6.32 left to make something happen in this quarter. Riding hard. Eli Wooten, Wooten. The goalie slips and falls. Golden opportunity for the Orange, but then a behind the back pass and a beauty for Georgetown. They'll break in the other way. Brian McGrath getting some time, number 29, brings in from his D midi spot. And that was mean, I believe, with that behind the back pass to help the clear. What a fantastic effort. McCavera. Brings in right-handed cradle. Good spin move. Walk Denver all over him. One of SU's best defenders. Under six minutes to go in the third. Georgetown up by three, threatening to extend the lead to four goals. Meehan has been a thorn in the SU side all night. A work a little bit of a weave with Dan Martin, All-American Mitty. Martin left-handed cradle. Works a scoop play to Meehan. Watched by Alexander. Pass in front. Shot and a score. They'll get it again. Number 12, McCavera scores one more time. They worked the play perfectly. He was wide open about five yards to the left of Gebhardt. Just did a really nice job. Meehan starts it, throwing it back, and then just a nice move. Watch. There's the pass. Just see it at the end. You can see. Number 12, McCavera, as he shot out from behind the cage and then put it backwards. Goal number 11. Face-offs, Georgetown 11-9. So five goals on the season for Greg McCavera, the freshman from Lindbrook, New York. One of the first couple of games he's had to his Georgetown career. Powell comes away with a face-off. Casey just one goal in this game after three against Virginia. Charging in, shoots and scores! Casey Powell getting open and trying to get this Carrier Dome crowd charged up. The Orange been still down by three, but that's the way to move in the right direction if you're Syracuse. That's one of those unassisted, uh, I just got the ball, try and stop me type goals, and there's two or three guys chasing them. Nobody slides. The crease the defenseman just standing there, and uh, Casey Powell, Trying to do it himself, takes a nice right-handed shot, brings it back within three. And once again, the face-offs become important. Second goal of the game for Casey Powell. Fifth on the 96th season. And the lead is shaved down to three, but another face-off won. Boffman wins and then brings it to the offensive zone. Shot and a goal! Greg Peters from the left wing, wide open, bounces one home. And the Hoyas again have extended that lead. 
good look at what happens when you can create a situation getting the face off. An unsettled situation. It's nothing but a fast break, and you've really got to be able to get back there. Boffman got it over to the left wing, and as you said, he was all by himself, and Brennan gives him goal number 12. So the faceoffs really help the momentum here. This is what the sixth goal for Georgetown in the third quarter. That is Dan Brennan, the goal number three, the 6'1 junior, 175 pounder. So he has got a goal to give him a four goal advantage again. Georgetown looking to win another faceoff. Pappas with a nice effort. Along with Aaron Kelly, number 32, long stick defensive player. And Boy has come away with it. Pappas will reset. Giovanni back on the field for Georgetown on this offensive set. Brian Price, second line attackman, number 14, will help handle also. Here comes Corey. Now, the last time we saw these guys, they ran the same play, the Wii that ended up dealing a goal. That's right. And they're using a, like a multiple look offense and uh, giving Syracuse a lot to think about and a lot to do as they try to get you increase those gaps and open up those shooting lanes. And then they got one there for a pass. Did Giovanni bounce shot that one over the cage. Gebhardt may have gotten a piece. Great ball control by Georgetown. They good, do a good job of getting it in when they have to and then using the corners and moving the ball out. Score by quarters. Georgetown is on the third. 6-2 for a 12-8 lead. Unbelievable. McCavra carries in. Lost possession. Rake almost in. May have rung off the pipe again. Boy, the Hoyas have caught the pipe a few times in this game as well. Brian Price that time. Physical play at midfield. Cummings lost the handle. And Giovanni comes away with it for Georgetown. The Hoyas again will reset it. Brian Price top of the box. Good move right-handed cradle. Shot there. Good Stopped save. by Gebhardt. Rakes it into his crease. Twice. Casey Powell scored goals to try to get the Orangemen going in the right direction. Here's a penalty coming up against Georgetown. Maybe this is a break the Orangemen needed with a man up coming. 3.21, Dale to go in the third quarter. And that's going to be a hold. That's uh, Syracuse be their third man up opportunity there. At one, two at this point. So they will get 30 seconds now as they got a hold. So the man who scored that goal a moment ago against Syracuse, Dan Brennan, number three, is guilty of the 30-second technical hold call. A lot of time left for Syracuse, but you want to take advantage now when you've got a man up. This is a good opportunity. You've been struggling a little bit. You've had a couple of fast break goals from Casey Paul. Now you've got to run a little bit of a man up offense. Carcaterra works back for Powell. Scored twice tonight. Jackson has a goal that in the first half. Morrissey scored also in the first, but in the second it's been all Georgetown. Six third period goals. An offensive explosion, a cutting Powell. They've got a piece of that one as well. As Eli Wooten up for the stop that time. It's a great feed and cut. Doyle works back to Powell. Casey can't get the shot off. Shot in front, though, a score. Syracuse gets the goal it needed from Jim Morrissey. The senior captain is open. He paid the price, though, Dale. Big time hit as he releases the shot. Well, you're always going to pay the price, but when you see the net ripple, that makes it all worthwhile. And uh, just had to, time to fake Wooten out a little bit. And uh, Morrissey went up and down and put it by him. So Jim Morrissey, the senior out of Skinny Atlas, comes up with a goal, brings Syracuse back within three. Once again, face off. By the way, checking the saves. You've got, what, uh, only six for, for Georgetown in the save department. So a big score from... Morrissey, he's got a hat trick, third goal of the game for him. SU down the faceoff department by three, heading into that one, and the procedure call against the Orange gives Georgetown the ball in the offensive end. And the front line players, Dan Martin, number 11, will control. Harvey Sakharin is on long stick defense. He's a transfer from UMass, initially went there to play in Amherst for the Minutemen. Was not happy with the situation, so. Game to play for Coach Simmons. And here he is. Martin, top of the box. Now he's got a guard against an All-American on defense. Tough order for Sakharin. McCavra works back for Dan Shea. Top of the box in the right-handed cradle. Alexander on him as we roll down toward two minutes to go in the third period. 
Shea gets a pick. Alexander lost his footing for a moment. Shea behind the cage. Right-handed cradle jumps, thought about an air gate play instead, feeds in front. Brennan tried the one-timer, trying to back up as Gebhardt. Did he win the race? Yes, he did. Nice job by Gebhardt. Let's check in now with our sideline reporter, Beth Mowens. What do you have, Beth? Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, after that last face-off, uh, Toby Price came off to the sideline. He came out from the half with his knee wrapped, and he's now getting it iced down over on the Syracuse bench, so he might not be available for face-offs in the fourth quarter. We'll try and uh, get an update for you as the game progresses. Dave? All right, Beth, thanks very much. That certainly is a concern for Syracuse and Coach Roy Simmons. Top face-off specialist, Toby Price, shaking up. And we will track the progress of Toby. Morrissey, who just scored a moment ago, has got the three on the right wing off that stoppage of play. Doug Jackson behind the cage. Right-handed cradle. Syracuse to within three as we head down under a minute 30 to go in the third. Shot by Jackson, a score! Blistering shot, right-hander by Doug Jackson, low to high, Dales. You mentioned that can be an effective shot technique. And pretty Jackson much just, beats Eli Wooten easily. Pretty much just unassisted. Beating one guy one-on-one, -on -one, and that's exactly what they do. He beats 27, Schumer, and that gets Syracuse to within two, but it was just a great effort, just one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, they had the crease pretty well crammed up, and he beat him, came around from the side. But faceoffs now 14-10 in favor of Georgetown, but they got in the last couple, and uh, when they need him, they seem to come up with the important ones. This is a good one for Syracuse. If they can get this, let's see what we get here. Apparently, Tony Bryce's oh, knee is okay because yeah. he's back out there taking the face off. Violation procedure call against Boffman of Georgetown. So SU and Toby Price back on the field. With a minute 15 to go in the third, Orange within two now against the Hoyas tonight. Ooh, nice bad pass. To lead Kutaya, but just a little bit too high for him. And Georgetown looks to break the other way. Vanderpool, nice hit at midfield. No whistle, a lot of contact. Dave Yurick and the Georgetown bench wanted a penalty call. And Ira Vanderpool. Toby Price then makes a run at Boffman, no call. It's a physical play for both sides. Greg Peters lost possession. Then the penalty flag comes down on the far side of the field. It's against yeah, Syracuse. It's going to be a minute. No, push. Technical push call against the SU. Laxman with 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. So Vanderpool, there's the, there's the push. White, 44. So that will be a 30-second penalty. And there is... A 50 seconds left, so it'll be uh, 20 seconds left to go in a quarter. Syracuse would love to stop them here and stay within two. They got to feel they made some progress. There's Vanderpool going to take a seat. New helmet with the uh, little uh, feathers on there. Look like uh, the way the Indians when they first played the game. To honor the Native American heritage of right. the cross, Coach Roy Simmons Jr. has been very heavily involved with the Onondaga Nation south of Syracuse. A lot of Goodwill lacrosse events he has been a part of. They're the penalty story so far. Syracuse has racked up three minutes, 30 seconds of them. Meehan works to Brennan. Top of the box on the man up. 32nd man up situation for the Hoyers trying to take advantage again. Meehan behind the cage. Shea works top of the box for Martin. Thought about a shot. Shea left wing. 20 seconds to go in the period. Sides are even. Shot Martin. Never got to the cage. Smiley may have gotten a piece of that one. Just 14 seconds left in the quarter. Here comes Georgetown again, though. Me in the offensive end. Feeds top of the box. Shot and a score. Boffman does it again from the right side. What a game tonight from Scott Boffman. Only a freshman from Ellicott City, Maryland. He has lit up the orange defense tonight. One of the biggest problems, uh, they were even. Everybody trying to find somebody as they got their men and uh, just by himself takes a nice shot. Hoffman, 6'1", 170, gives him back that three goal lead and Syracuse had him to two, now it's back to three. Just six seconds to go in the period as you can see in the lower right hand of your screen, Syracuse down again by three. That Boffman goal really hurts. Price wins the faceoff. Three seconds. Can he get a shot off? No. Check from behind. And that'll do it. So we're done with the third period. From the carry it off tonight. The 10th ranked Georgetown Hoyas and their head coach Dave York coming back to Central New York. So far in Styles, 13-10, SU is down. Fourth quarter action coming up from the Carrier Dome right after these words. You're watching SU Lacrosse on Super Sports.
Welcome back to the Carrier Dome. 13 to 10, Georgetown leading Syracuse as we head into the fourth quarter. And success against Syracuse is nothing new for Georgetown coach Dave Urich. As a player at Cortland State, he beat the Orange back in the 70s. Then as a coach at Hobart, he won in the 80s and now trying to pick up a win at Georgetown in the 1990s. He's got one quarter left to do it. Dave? All right, Beth, 176 and 54 overall. Dave York's coaching record, seven years at Georgetown. As the Orangemen trying to put on some pressure here to start off the fourth quarter. Violation of push goes against Georgetown, so SU still has it. Just 13 seconds into the fourth for Coach Roy Simmons, Jr. One of the things they talked about, Coach Simmons talking to Beth, said they wanted to own the ball, and uh, they did not do it in the third quarter, and they're still down by three. They got to own it in the fourth and maintain it. Doyle on the left wing. Had a good start to the game, but has not been that effective an offensive player since. Trying to beat his man. Oh, oh. Right, shot there. Great play by Wooten. Rebound. And Cavett a stone <laughs> cold. What a play by Eli Wooten to stop that one. Georgetown breaks out the other way. Hoyas. Oh, that trouble. man has shot that one just wide. Gebhardt may have just gotten a stick on that one. A blistering shot by McCavera from the right wing. That was a super fast break. He just missed the shot, but it was picture perfect in the passing and, and the sprinting down the field after a, after a shot. And uh, Georgetown gets it back. Greg McCavera will work back for Meehan. Matt Alexander, number 30. Defensive midi is on him. Georgetown, a three-goal lead is run underway in the fourth quarter. And Beth talked earlier about the domination Syracuse has had here at the Dome, but the last couple of seasons beginning the year has not been so sweet to the Orange here. Syracuse on a breakout. Orange been Jim Morrissey, co-captain and senior. That's three goals already. Passes off for Doyle and reset the offense. Good takeaway, Dale, though, for the Orange on D. Yeah, and you know what? They got They got to settle it down a little bit here. They don't want to panic. Because they got a lot of time left. Powell oh, has space. Behind the back shot, he does it. Oh, what a play by Casey Powell. Can you say legend? It's building here on the SU Hill. Casey Powell, the trick shot to score for Syracuse. Yeah, he just, uh, he's got number 13, Dan Shea at him. And then he gets rid of him. Whoa. And as they slide <laughs> over, he just goes behind the back. And you're going to get a good look at it in real time. There's where he beats Shea. Shea takes a perfunctory shot at him. But uh, just a real nice shot by Powell. Third goal tonight. Again, unassisted. But he's got him back to within two. If that doesn't get the crowd and the team going in the right direction, I'm not sure what yeah, will. Right. I mean, that's what you want for momentum. Faceoff's lead still belongs to Georgetown. Price cannot get it. Still no possession. Sakharin taking a hack at it. Fenzel had a chance at it. Ball still loose, and Georgetown looks like it'll come away with it. Nice hustle and good effort from the Hoyas. Greg Peters, second line attack came away, but that pass a little bit loose. Sacred in the defensive end. Hit is a release. Sloppy passes again. Boy, oh boy. comes away with it. Dribbling it. Here comes Morrissey right wing. Jim thought about a shot left-handed. Instead elects to reset the offense. Good idea. Make it a higher percentage play. The and Orangemen they, need high percentage shots right now. And they got a big stick down there to boot, so they don't want to have to handle that that way. Powell could just one on one again here. Casey Powell backing in on the top. Oh, he's got a flag. Shoeless. Penalty flag drops low whistle, now, so get the Orangemen will have the man up. Get a shot out. That's what they want to do. You want to get a shot off, you Doyle got a chance. Backs in. Matt Doyle trying to get the angle. Doyle still with it. Bounce shot. That one stick the side and may have also gotten a little bit of pipe. But Syracuse will have the. Man up, forthcoming with 12.34 to go in the fourth. Well, they did a nice job of getting a shot off there. You want to make sure you get the shot off. You can see him kind of hacking and hewing and slashing, and he's going to be down for a minute. But they did a nice job of getting a shot off and not wasting the time. So now they'll be man up. And let's double check uh, their man up opportunity, number four for Syracuse. They're one of three so far. My cheer list, the guilty party. One minute non-releasable penalty against yeah. Georgetown and a great opportunity for the Orange. So far, one of three on the man-up situation. Scarcatera handles on the near side along with Powell. Man-up unit on the field for Syracuse. Trying to pull within one. Morrissey, check from behind. Powell will find the angle and track it down. Carcaterra top of the box. Doug Jackson and Cavett need some space and Carcaterra winds, shoots that one right over Wooten. Good backup from Jim Morrissey, and SU still has it. Carcaterra, plenty of time to wind up and shoot. Jackson back for Doyle, has some room. 
Carcaterra shot a moment ago. Wine shoots again. Wooten again up to the task to make a big save. Kavit, great job to regain the rebound. That was a super play by Rob Kavit, one of the intangibles there as he grabs the ground ball. Man up situation counting down. Kavit the feeder behind the cage. Left handed cradle. Carcaterra again. This time a pass. Scoop shot through the crease. Who's going to win the race to it? SU will and still have possession with 11.30 in the quarter. Good hustle by Kavavit and good hustle by Wooten, but he got beat. Syracuse will get the ball back. No penalty now. Everybody's even, but Syracuse still has possession. Lots of time. Morrissey on that right wing. Left-handed shot. Bouncer through the crease and by Wooten. SU backs it up again. Kavavit, closest man to it on the end line. Nine saves for Wooten so far in this game tonight. He has been... Outstanding when the Hoyas have needed him. Kavit hit the feeder. This time passes off. Oh. Doyle's shot is too high, though. He was hit as he released, and Wooten able to make an easy save. Syracuse riding a little harder now. I think that's what they have to do. Got to get this ball back. Force a bad pass. Something that like that. It. Ball loose. Sakran, can he get a cross on it? Instead tries to bat at it. Comes to Jackson, who stays on his feet despite a good hit from Dan Martin. Feed to a wide open man. Rob Kavit finishes the job. Scores an empty netter. Wooten and was pulls up. the oars within one. Wooten was up playing defense, trying to guard off an open man. And uh, he didn't think they were going to save it in, but they did. They got a nice, nice bit of work there by Doug Jackson. And Jackson saw that he was out of the cage. He just looped it over his head. And Kavavit, good, brings it within one. But I'll tell you one thing, this kid has not gotten rattled here. Wooten has not gotten rattled, and I don't think he's going to now. He knows you're taking a, a risk. So now you got to just suck it up and get tough. But Syracuse putting a little pressure on, putting the move on. Oh, has a two face-off advantage, but the score is a little closer than that. 13-12. Hat trick on the night for Cavett. Price wins the face-off, charging it, passing Cavett, shoots. He scores again! Rob Cavett lights it up for the orange with one more time. Make it four goals on the night for the super attack men. And the Orangemen have tied this one up, 13 all. Eli Wooten says, whoa, what hit me there? Well, it all starts from the faceoff, and they got a nice one out of Toby Price. He ran out, started the fast break. He runs down the right wing, gets it to Kavovit, and, you know, it's not that there's nothing you can do about that because you've got to try to guard these people on the fast break. He makes a nice pass, and Kavovit, a little more contested than the one before that, but uh, a nice shot brings him within 13 apiece, so we're going to get time out now. Toby Price and the Orange have tied this game up after trailing by as many as four tonight. And the fans at the Dome showing their appreciation as well in the 1996 home Dome opener. Syracuse has knotted this one up. Cavett, the offensive star, four goals on the night, six for the season. And Dave York's got to be saying, let's just take a little time here to relax. With 10.42 to go in the fourth, let's check in with our sideline reporter, Beth Mowens. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, uh, talking with Coach Urich at the half, he wondered about how much gas was left in the tank. In the third quarter, they were definitely driving full bore. 7-4, they outscored the Orange. There was a lot of emotion being displayed on the sideline. The coaches had to utter phrases like, calm down, stay focused, stay in the game. But since then, it's been all Orange as they've gone on a run now. Three goals here in the fourth quarter, and apparently a little more gas in Syracuse's tank at this point. Dave? All right, Beth. Coach... Eric's team, interesting always to hear what goes on on the sideline. A lot of emotional oh. changes. I mean, oh. Georgetown was in the driver's seat. But guys like Rob Cavett have turned that around for Coach Simmons' team. Price with a great feed. Yeah, nice assist, and Toby Price get, should get as much credit as Cavett. And uh, Cavett just knew where to put it because he put it the same place the last time, but there was nobody there the last time. See how he hit him so beautifully in stride. Nine shots consecutively for the Orange, and they lead in that stat now, 44-35. More importantly for Coach Simmons' team, the score is finally tied up. Sakrin, the freshman, lost the handle. A couple times he's had trouble with ground balls. Those are very, very crucial in a game like this. Big stick down. Let's Rourke, see. Denver, and Smiley battling for it. Better give it to the goalie. Dangerous pass. He goes to Gebhardt in his own cage. Long outlet pass for Price, all alone. Can afford a mishandle. Toby Price again. Has Alexander with him on a two-on-one. Powell, good spin move. Casey Powell, a feed in front. Cavett does it one more time! Can you believe this guy? Rob Cavett, goal number five on the night. And Syracuse is up again. The Orange men have regained the lead. Got to give a lot of credit to Casey Powell. 
Casey Powell knows he's going to draw a lot of people. He's got two of them right there, and he finds the open man. Now Kavovic just goes high, takes a little jump shot, three in a row for Kavovic. A hat trick over the last minute and a half for this guy. Amazing. Now you got to give goal tonight, third in a row. Just going to say, you got to give Toby Price a lot of credit. He's getting the faceoffs now. He's getting some help from his wingman on that one. It went all the way down back of Smiley before he got it. Ooh, ball still down. Nobody up with it yet. Pappas cannot get a handle on it. Matt Casson for Georgetown lost it. Finally, Dan Martin comes away, trip on the play. Oh, that's going to cost him. That will be a penalty going yeah. against SU's Devin Ackerman, number 26. So a bad one to take. It's his After second. that big, big roll of momentum created by Kavit. That's his second one. Ackerman with a with a minute. He's a freshman out of Orchard Park. So that's a that's a kind of a freshman mistake. Uh, you certainly don't want to. That's a that's a minute, I believe. So that's that's an error. They will be up for one minute, and Syracuse <coughs> has the work cut out for them. They got a lead. Can they protect it? Being down one man, one minute. Well, there's the man up. Georgetown has been effective in this category as well. Boffman on the right wing has had a great game. Fenzel behind the cage. Works the mean. Here's Dan Martin, top of the box. Feed in the right wing. Fenzel back up top. They'll work it all the way around. Good pass oh. Mian driving in there. Stripped from behind. Rebound loose in front. Poked at. Could have a crease violation called against Georgetown. Big turnover to the Orangemen. Well, they still got to clear it now. Let's right. look and see what they get. They got to get some help here at the midfield as they got a time and they get some short sticks in. Let's see what they do. They are going to go all, they're going to double the ball, get the ball to goalie. Gephardt in his crease off to Casey Powell. That's a smart move. You don't want to face Casey Powell for the Georgetown defense on the right. Great job to clear it. Powell lost at the last moment and so quickly regained, just hopping off that one, quick as a cat. Casey Powell behind the cage. Nine minutes even to go. Oh! He's up by a goal. Cavett oh. hammered on defense. They mugged him back there. Tim Plunkett all over him. No call. The double team. Finally a penalty flag drop. Another, Another one. one goes down. Cavett still oh. has the ball and he finally lost possession. What stick handling from Rob Cavett and what a game this guy has had. Absolutely getting hammered in the corner here, Dale. Yeah, watch, 42, there's the slash right there. And that, that, then on the head, he got him on the back, the head. Then the back again, now the side, now the arm, now the shoulder, now the other shoulder. And you wonder why these guys wear pads? He got hit seven times. Tim Plunkett, a minute for slashing, he'll sit out. Pick your pick there, whichever one you want yeah, to call you know, on. Yeah, or Plunkett. Tim. They were both <laughs> the guilty parties there. Carcaterra. Starts things off for the Orangemen on the man up. Georgetown plays his zone and their man down defensive set. Morrissey behind the cage. On oh. offense for the Orange. Hit hard. Ball comes loose and a turnover. That's, so that's a bad one. Yeah, uncontested. Not even, uh, you know, not even anybody on him. Looked like he just lost the angle and it went way out of bounds. So Syracuse now got to play a little defense, hope they can get the ball back. This is where your defense has got to come up with a turnover. You can't just play defense. You got to play defense and get a turnover. And that's what Syracuse had been so good at before. This is a new defense, still getting their, their sea legs. Long, long pass over Martin here. on the near Martin. side. Yep, dangerous outlet pass to start off the clear attempt. Alexander, good hard check. Nearly gets a slash call. Dangerous pass in the middle of the field, picked off by Ryan Cummings. Here comes the former Nottingham Bulldog into the offensive zone. Cummings winds, shoots. Good save by Wooten. Tracked that one well all the way, and then he outlets on the other. Oh, end. another to mistake. Giovanni, who lost the handle. So SU right back to it. Cummings in the offensive zone. Team up by a goal. Rolling down to a minute to go in the fourth. Syracuse coming up again. Sacrin, the freshman, shoots that one. Goes in for a goal. Looked like it got by Wooten. Harvey Sacrin looks like he's going to get credit for his first goals at Orangeman. Uh, he came right out of the bench area. They didn't see him coming. He's got the six-foot stick. They pass it back to him, and when you get that six-foot stick, you can get a heck of a whip on it. He actually goes low with it right between the legs and hit him right in the leg, but obviously you can see where it went in. So Sakharin, the big stick guy, comes up with a very important goal, giving Syracuse two-goal lead. First goal as an orange man, and boy, that coming a big time. Harvey's kind of had a rough night with ground balls. 
missed opportunities, but he'll remember this goal for a long time. Whoa, look out for the hit. Vanderpool gets jacked in the play by Boffman. Had the faceoff, too. Lost it. Lost the ball. Got the faceoff, but it went right over to Georgetown. Oh, bad oh, pass. Yeah. Nice defense. Not a good pass oh, that's at all. A push. That's a push. That's a push. Break that up. That's going to be a push call against Georgetown. Iorio had a frustration. Nailed Price. I'll tell you, Toby Price, as Beth pointed out earlier, is really favoring that knee, and he is really limping around there, but showing a gutty effort to stay on the field. They did a nice job. There's the push. Did a nice job of getting the face off, and uh, then they lost it after Vanderpool lost it. But Syracuse uh, looking good in the intensity department in the fourth quarter. Casey Powell into the offensive zone. Seven and a half minutes to go. Syracuse on that Sakran goal, up by two. Doyle on the left wing. Matt Doyle making the big comeback from the knee injury. Big part of SU's attack in 94. A team lost to Virginia in the national semifinals. Vanderpool top of the box. Ira carries in. Back shot score! And a big one for number 44. Syracuse now up by three goals as Ira Vanderpool, who had two against UVA, gets his third of the year. Beth talked about the fuel in the tank. She was quoting Coach Urich. And Syracuse got a guy like Vanderpool in. He takes a high bouncer. And he comes up with a three-goal lead for Syracuse. But Syracuse has shown a lot of gas in the tank here this last quarter. And uh, he gets his third as he gets congratulations from Coach Simmons. And Syracuse coming up with the face-offs and coming up with some good goals. But you know what? It looks like Georgetown making some mistakes they didn't make in the first quarter. Passing not quite as crisp. Some ground balls that they maybe would have gotten on earlier picked up by Syracuse. So Syracuse having a good job here. Let's see. No, it's going to go against Syracuse. So they're going to have to call. play quickly. Right against the Orangemen. And they'll play on. Meehan will trigger play for Georgetown. Score by quarters. How about SU and complete domination in the fourth. Six zip. Yeah, that's a good time Shut to dominate. Up. I'll tell you. Shea, top of the box, trying to end that streak for the Hoyas. Bounce shot over Gebhardt, who got a piece. Stays. Just make a save on that bouncer. The bounce shot too short, though, of the goal. And Gebhardt had a good look at it. Just checking saves here on Gebhardt. He's got nine. Dan Martin against the freshman Sakharin starts playoff. Meehan against Ryan Cummings, trip from behind. A couple flags come down. Hopefully they'll only get a push penalty. There, yeah. the whole I think a technical hold or a yeah. push coming against Ryan Cummings, who's been whistled a couple times in this game. Yeah, that's that's definitely it, and that's uh, that'll cost him. So it'll be a uh, man up opportunity seven. number White six. Number seven. So you know, you look at the penalty department. This number seven right here. You look at the penalty department. I remember last year, Dave, Syracuse had 10, 12, 14 penalties. So they've actually kind of <gasps> toned it down a bit. And of course, that new rule where you can't release it by getting it in the box might have something to do with it. But right now, they got a hold on for 30 seconds. There's the penalty look. Syracuse at Five seven. minutes. Well, that is a large number. Man up so far. Georgetown just one of six. Boffman behind the cage to Martin. Dan Martin tries the old oh, air good gate save. play. And a great play made by Gebhardt to shut off his angle. Heads up. Really kept that stick low. Now he's got to clear it. Gebhardt from his own crease to Mike Smiley. Nice, nice look. Pass in the middle of the field. A good feed to Sakharin. The freshman, can he do it again? Morrissey on the right wing will settle. He had Alexander shrieking in with a full head of steam. Jim Morrissey, senior captain, still has it with a right-handed cradle. Feeds up top. Doyle is open. What a move by Matt Doyle. He scores. Backhand. Tremendous deep move by Doyle. A fake and a shuffle shot for a goal. And the Orangemen lead it by four. 17-13, 5.50 to go in the fourth. Doyle unsettled. Goes behind, gets for Morrissey. Now here's Doyle after Morrissey makes the shot. Watch, goes right-handed, he goes left-handed, he goes backhand. And that is an impressive goal and gives Syracuse some breathing room with 5.52 left, Dave. Fourth of the year for Matt Doyle. Face-off dead even at 16. Alexander, former West Jenny Wildcat again. Uh, by Syracuse a little bit tuned in there on the wing, so they're going to lose possession right. on that. Procedure call against the Orange on the faceoff. Georgetown wins it, but boy, in the fourth quarter, it's all been won by the Orange. They've outscored them by a touchdown and shut them out. 7 0. I want to mention just briefly when we see this penalty, oh, they got to adjust the uh, cage. That was a Jeff Lowe, 23, in the game for Syracuse, a freshman football player who right. is. His uh, spectacular career at Liverpool is uh, seeing some playing time early. 
So now uh, they're going to start again. They adjust the uh, cage. Georgetown a goal with six seconds to go in the third. Since then, they have not scored. Brennan trying to change that. Good play by Gebhardt. Did he get there in time for the backup? Somebody in you white better did. believe it. Somebody in white did. There were three guys back there. They beat him to the line, and that will be Syracuse ball. And they have gotten better clearing the ball. Long, ooh, just as I said that. Some trouble. Yeah. Work Denver being manhandled by three Hoyas. Denver, a loose ground ball on the far side. Morrissey had a cross on it. He's out and of bounds. It may have been an out of bounds call. It will be against Jim Morrissey on the far side. Good pressure defense on the play from Iorio. Syracuse on a 7 0 run over 9 30 to go in this game and a timeout called by the Orange. And Syracuse will get the ball. They waved off that penalty. There was a hold on this side of the field, so Syracuse should get the ball, Dave. Dave Yurick and the Hoyas will have a little bit of work ahead of them now. A game in which they played so well in the third, outscoring Syracuse 7-4. Assistant coach John Desco. The Orange coaching staff was down a member for Virginia. We'll talk about that in a moment. First, our sideline reporter, Beth Moen, standing by. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, one thing we've noticed down here on the sideline is that Kevin Donahue is running the substitutions for Syracuse. There was some confusion earlier in the game as to who was going in and out on the clears in particular. But here in the fourth quarter, especially, Syracuse has had the right personnel in the game at the right time. Of course, Donahue was not in Virginia when the Cavaliers made their big fourth quarter run. Of course, his wife had a baby over the weekend. Back upstairs, Dave. Right. I mean, exact, he didn't, I was, he didn't I was go say for that. that. Exact same thing. <laughs> he didn't go down. <laughs> you know, it is important because they talked about the fact you have to have a man down offense. Now, now you mean say man down defense? No, man down offense because if you get the ball, you used to run down, get it in the box, release the offensive guys running. Can't do that anymore. So the guys you got in there, you got to play with them. If they're strictly defensive guys and they got lead sticks and, uh, and bad hands, you got to play with them. So you really have to have a lot of people be able to get them in and get them out. And that's what that sideline management is. And, and Donahue does that then uh, Laddie Horrell had to do it last week he said you can't believe it you can't follow the game at all you just have to make sure who's going in and who's going out look at the shot disparity there in the second half 25-16 for Syracuse ground balls Syracuse up by 11 and a lot of this fourth quarter has been come off of important ground balls coach Donahue and his wife celebrating the birth of their third child last weekend so he missed the game. Some things are more important than that cross <laughs> on occasion. Here's Denver on the near side. Great spin move to get away from his man, Or Denver. Yeah, he's going to attract a lot the of offensive attention. offensive zone. Works that one to Jackson, and wisely Jackson will reset. His team's got the lead. Now a penalty flag is dropped. Offsides against yep. uh, the Hoyas. Doug Jackson still with possession, still has it. Shoots and scores! What a move by Doug Jackson falling down. Reese, a laser beam shot up high over the shoulder of Wooten. And the Orangemen now open up a nice, healthy five-goal lead. That also wipes out the uh, offside. Nice move as he beat DG Ivani and uh, has looked very, very good here. You're going to look at it in real time. Real high shot. And you see how fast that ball moves. And... You know, they've had a real good game out of number 46, Eli Wooten, but he had no chance on that one. He's, I think he's up by about 10 saves now, but Syracuse has just peppered him here in the fourth quarter. Say that again. Three goals for Jackson. Pappas able to finally win a Georgetown faceoff and get into the offensive end. What a turnaround in the fourth quarter. As Askew has just blistered them with eight goals in a row to take control of a game which they're once in some serious trouble. Yeah, down by three and, and not looking, uh, you know, all that good at that point, but give them credit. Dan Shea, top of the box. Works on Alexander with a right-handed cradle, spun around, good defense by Matt. Shea still with it, gets a shot off, bouncer, good save by Gebhardt. Give credit to the good defensive effort in front too, Dale, because they cleared the way for Gebhardt to see that shot clearly. Absolutely, and uh, Fotopoulos got the ball, had to send it back to start it to his goalie, but he's going to have to get rid of it before they're going to call failure to advance. And that's exactly what happened. Syracuse Call has against. to work on that. Right. You know, one of the things, Syracuse does not have a lot of time to, in this preseason to run 110 yards because there's all sorts of practices uh, in, in different places. They don't always get the time that some of the other teams do. And uh, I think that will come as they work on that, Dave. Dad Martin, top of the box, Dale. Controls off that 
Failure to advance call against Syracuse. Mike Boyle with possession, trying to rip off a quick shot. Gebhardt up to the task. Jason Gebhardt has had oh. a real second half. Great outlet pass on the fly to Ryan Cummings. Here he comes into the offensive zone. Feeds off for Powell. Morrissey with it right side. Jim Morrissey will reset. You can hear Coach Donahue from up here screaming, just take your time and get the offense going. Georgetown scoreless over 11 minutes of action. No need to take a bad shot. Cavett still with it. Rob has five goals in this game tonight. He's been the offensive star who got things going for the Orangemen when they badly needed a run. Personally made sure that happened. You know who else? Also, you, you, you got to look at, uh, at some other people, but uh, they really did a nice job. Cavett did when he needed to, but uh, Casey Powell also. Morrissey feeds. Coming scores! One central New Yorker to another. Scanning Atlas native Jim Morrissey to Nottingham's Ryan Cummings and a late flag is dropped. We could have an unsportsmanlike call coming against Georgetown. We'll check it out. Yeah, Ryan Cummings all by himself there and nobody got a stick on stick. Couldn't get on his stick and when you can crank from that distance, once again, you got a lot of goal to defend and there's going to be a little explanation here of the, of the penalty. So with the nine straight goals, the Orange now a 19-13 lead on Georgetown and pretty much salted this thing away at and, this point. And get the and get the face off because of the penalty. Uh -huh. So they will uh, they don't even have to face it off. But I was gonna say about Casey Paul when when things needed to get done he did some himself and kept him in the game. Kept him within three a couple of times. Price has done a yeoman's job as well despite shaking off a knee injury. Come through some big face offs and a couple of great feeds as well. Morrissey on the wing. Owning the ball is what uh, Coach Simmons said, and that's what they have done here in the fourth quarter. You look at it right there. They have owned it. They have really not even let it out at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nine nothing edge in the fourth. And this guy handling with the right hand of cradle at the moment is one of the reasons. Carcaterra, Boffman right on him, but no reason to rush anything at this point. Rolling down toward two minutes to go in the fourth. Paul Carcaterra, left hand shot, whistles right by Wooten. And Rob Calvert there for the easy backup. You know that goose egg there also, you got to give credit to the defense. I think they've improved. They've made adjustments, and I think that they played a lot better in the fourth quarter, obviously, than they did in some of the others. But uh, they cleared the ball better, and they played good defense, obviously, to shut them out in the fourth quarter. Cavett behind the cage. Controls on White Shulis, who we mentioned his name several times in the beginning of this game. But since then, see the shots that Syracuse has ripped off 50 shots in this game. That's an incredible number at this point. He's got to keep in the box there. They last two minutes. Cavett with it oh. from his knees, trying to feed Morrissey. Finally, it's broken up. Good defensive play by Kassin, and he comes away with it. Boffman the other way, number 15. Left-handed cradle, thought about a shot instead feed. Oh, Bounce nice shot save. By Brennan, what a save made by Gebhardt. Dan Brennan was robbed oh. in the intercept by oh, Benzel. One. Better save, rebound loose, and still loose as the whistle is blown. Gebhardt came up huge. Fenzel on the intercept, and boy, right in front, Brennan a couple times. Now, Brennan was pushed into the crease. He was in the crease, but he was pushed in illegally, so it will, it will stay Georgetown ball, but you're absolutely right. That was a great save by Gebhardt. Boffman triggers play right side. Left-handed shot. High and wide, partially deflected. Gebhardt tried to rake it into his crease. Cummings now tries to run it down near side. Hit hard on the play by McCavera. Out of bounds it is with a minute three to go in the fourth. Jason Gebhardt standing to get his first career win as an orange. Cross player and he has made some super saves, especially in the second One half. Minute. Syracuse defensively coming down from what the 17 at Virginia now down to 13. You can keep this up. You have them down in single figures before, <laughs> before too long. Bushman carrying on the right wing. McCavera behind the cage. Nice move to get by his man. McCavera scoops it, hit hard. Cummings helps sandwich him. Rourke Denver, good hustle. Rourke Denver came up to really tag him. 39 seconds to go. Syracuse up big. Vanderpool scampers onto the field for SU. Sherritts will get some last minute clear time here. Vanderpool the lead. Watch out. Can't <laughs> run that head down or away Ooh. from the defense. He nearly got creamed by Fenzel. Ahead Vanderpool looking for a wide open net. 
As Wooten again was straying away from his crease. Ten on right. Vanderpool nearly did it. Yeah, they get the goalie right out and get him into the game. <laughs> Doyle had a spectacular goal in the fourth as well. Tries that one-time play for Cummings through the crease out of bounds. With 21-6 to go. I think both teams have to come away with this game and uh, feel that they've done some good things and they know they still got work to do. Uh, Dave York said, see how much gas is in the tank. I think they ran out a little bit here in the fourth quarter. And Syracuse turned it up and uh, improved when they had to defensively and certainly picked it up offensively. So SU certainly 1-0 in the Dome this year after a 6-2 record. Losses to Hopkins and Virginia a year ago. Meehan carrying in. Bounce shot wide of Gebhardt with just seven seconds left in this game. The Orangemen will win the first of 1996. Triggering play, Mike Boyle behind the cage. Just a couple seconds left. Shot oh, nice Meehan. save. Saved by Gebhardt. And that is an appropriate way to end this game. A flag dropped late by the official, but that apparently will not be a call. And this game is over. Head coach Roy Simmons Jr. gets another victory at Syracuse. His 258th lifetime as the Orange win 19-13. Final thoughts from our sideline report tonight. Here's Beth Mowens. Thank you very much, Dave. Well, that fourth quarter explosion saving Syracuse as they win their fifth straight home opener, and they advance their record in the Carrier Dome to 94-7. And, and, guys, I'm sure that trip now will be a whole lot of victory today. Dave? All right, Beth, thanks very much. Nice job on the sideline tonight. Some added insight. Dale, your final quick thoughts on a big Syracuse win. What a fourth quarter. Absolutely. That's the thing that's going to carry over to the next game. Forget the first three. Let's check the fourth. You did a great job. <laughs> no question. Syracuse takes it 19-13. As the Orangemen 1-0 on the 1-1 uh, in the 1996 season with Yale coming up down in Florida as their next game. Now for the entire Cable 13 Super Sports crew, this is Dave Ryan from my broadcast partners, Dale Dreipolcher and Beth Mowen, saying so long for the Dome. Casey Powell and the Orange win it 19-13 over Georgetown tonight. So long, everybody.